What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO, episode 101. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes, 30 under 30, a.k.a. the future class of gaming blessing, Adioye Jr. I don't know if I've heard that specific intro from you, Greg, and it feels nice to have it. I mean, you've earned it. It's an honor to Thank give you. it to you. You know what I mean? What did I say on that? I, I did a Games Daily intro for you that one time, but that was the day yeah. of it. It was pandemonium. That was the day of, yeah, it was pandemonium. You weren't like hosting that show, but you were introing sure. it. I think it, yeah. was, it was just the Forbes 30 under 30. I like the AKA now that I'm like getting to Tim Tim Getty status. You're getting too many awards. Multiple titles. Yeah, multiple yeah. awards. Exactly, uh, exactly. And now I, need, now I need to figure out an award to get in 2022. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Do they still do the South by Southwest thing? We, used to, uh, we yeah. didn't get you a game award still, right? That's the thing. Like you're in the, in the <laughs> that's future too sack, class. Though. Cause like it's when the game awards for for like the content creator of the year, it's usually like the names that are so big that even I don't know these names. Sure. Whereas like sure. they exist yeah. on, an, on just like another you know planet. Another, well, another I think it's it's much more about streaming now. It seems right, and like the, or like you know that kind of thing. It's mm. I don't you know it's not so about us the streaming game is what you're saying. I guess so. I mean, can you think about it? I remember when Jeff Gersman was getting nominated? I was trying to gamer back then or whatever. But like that's yeah. how that's and how you. you know. Well, yeah, me, I won it. You know, Jeff, Jeff just got nominated. Most mm-hmm. history doesn't really remember him. Where is he now? Nobody knows. I'm just saying. I think he's in the same place. I think he's at Giant Bomb still. I don't know. His Instagram has him in a garage a lot. I'm not sure. You know he what is I mean? in a garage a lot. I feel like I see every time I moving check his Instagram. Around, yeah, yeah, he's like moving boxes. He's moving like arcade cabinets and shit. Uh, of course, uh, this is P.S. I love you, which means it's trio now, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about this in episode 100. It's official. So please welcome back to the show, of course. She's the roller skate and marathon training game playing Janet Garcia. Yo, what's good? It's inter- I wasn't expecting the marathon train to be in there. Um, now, now it feels even more real than it already did. I pay attention, Janet. You know, I'm out there. I'm watching the Instagrams. I'm watching the tweets. I'm seeing what you're up to. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm. I think my marathon. It's in March, so okay. I'm getting pretty close to it. Um, yeah. and I feel pretty good about it because I'm like well, halfway just, through the hardest part of training. I'm looking. At, you did a yeah. You did a four hour run for 17 miles on Sunday. Yep. Jesus Christ, man. Caught up on Gamescast. I was like, what did y'all think of Metroid Dread? Let's find out together on this four-hour run. <laughs> we didn't even talk about it for four hours, I don't think. They didn't even talk about it for four hours. Yeah, I queued up like four episodes. Like I had the Metroid Dread one, um, Is Metroid Dread Too Hard, which I did end up getting to that one. The Phil Spencer interview, which right. I only just started. Uh, that one's super fun so far. And then one that Blessing, Blessings, um, was it Sable? Not Sable, no. Uh, Hype. Hyperlight Drifter people. Oh, Solar that Ash. Review. Solar Ash. Um, so I listened to that episode too. So yeah. It's a good episode. I mean, you should also listen to the Matt Booty one. Matt Booty one is really good. Remember the games cast? They don't, you know, these these shows we make, they don't go stale. You can go listen to them anytime. You know what I mean? I used and to listen you... to PS I Love You before I was on it, but now I, yeah. I think I, it's kind of obvious why I'm not like, let's hear what I had to say last week. You don't want to like, go back you know? and listen to the, I've seen I've seen more and more people going back and listening to the best character bracket and then also the resurrection bracket. Somebody yes. tweeted me about the resurrection bracket today and they're like, man, I wish Janet was on this because Jackie yeah, Dax would have gotten more love. <laughs> She yeah, would have come to her senses. She would have come to her senses and buried it alongside us. No, that was the, I mean, we talked about it really briefly, I think, in episode 100, but that was the craziest thing for me being off for the three months was listening to the content again. Like, you know, I mean, when was the last time I listened to a kind of funny podcast? When was the last time I ever listened to a PS I Love You all the way through? Like, it was awesome to do that and just be a fan and be there doing dishes and, you know, getting what so many of the kind of funny best friends get of like, yeah, arguing with you guys just in my room. Like, I'm like, oh, yep. God, why, you know, what are you, uh, yeah, but you can't hear me. But then I had the ability to text you and yell at you about that. So that was, yeah. that was you the were downside. Here, Big Boss would have like gotten further in that bracket. I forgot who Big Boss lost to in the bracket. Oh, uh, me too. I want to say it was like Nathan Drake like or super somebody. Early. Yeah. It yeah. was like some yeah. other like big place. I think, I think it was Kratos because I think that I, I think it was like it was one of those like first round battles that should have. That been was solid. That was final. solid snake. I think uh, I think Solid Snake was first round, and then Big Boss made it past the first round against somebody, yeah. and then went up against like another like PlayStation mascot character. And I was like, guys, it's Big Boss. And then Janet was like, Nah, man. But it's this Astrobot. Guy. And I was like, Wait, really? Astrobot did. I, I I still feel bad about Astrobot. I feel like Astrobot could have made it further. I think. And you give it Sunday. You know what I mean? You toss that bracket up a different way. People are gonna shake out differently. It's gonna it's gonna go. It's like, we got to play what's on the paper. What is the next bracket we do? Because we got to do one Great a question. year now. Maybe we do like multiple last year. 
I don't know. We got to do two a year now. I think what you know, it would really hit if we did the best Vita game of all time. You know, just go through, rank all them, huh? I mean, could we can we get sixty four good Vita games put in a bracket? Yeah, I didn't say they'd all be good. If, I didn't say they'd all be myself. good. All right, I said we could do it. Is that like is it a debate on what the yeah, best Vita game? Persona is? Persona Four Golden, boom, move on. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear the answer is Persona Four Golden. Now, Barrett, have you forgiven the Vita yet? No. Um, and <laughs> Greg, I actually want an apology from you specifically on you know selling selling the system that does we're nothing to do that, but we can just hurt start asking people. For- does nothing but hurt people, you know. Janet, you get, you I, get I, the sure system you... a, a nothing but love and attention for weeks on end. You put seventy five hours into the what is considered the best Vita game, Persona Four Golden, and then the Vita looks at you directly in your eyes and says "fuck you" and corrupts your game and your save data. Greg, I need an apology from you specifically. I don't know if you could I... like put all like this is one Vita that went wrong, you know, like out of what the millions that sold was it millions? Did we get hundreds millions? of millions. Sold? Hundreds <laughs> of millions. Hundreds of millions. That's all. Hundreds of millions. Where did you buy the Vita? I think that's the real. That's the, the real source of the IR. Oh, exactly. What kind of memory me card were you using? It was like uh, through the Vita. Fucking, a friend uh, or re- an enemy? Uh, what Greg did years ago? The Vita relocation program. Yeah, right? it was yeah. through that. I think. Well, see, it's just a, I. I feel like honestly, you need to apologize to the Vita. Because it's number one, you didn't support it in its time period. Number two, you didn't pay money to support it. Number three, you're getting this black market Vita. You don't know what's been done to it. Now you're turning around and doing this. You know what I mean? Like when you said reverse Uno on this apology. When you get into a relationship with somebody and you don't check any of the information about them, you can't then complain when like they give you an STD. Like that's on you for not looking into this earlier. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what happened here. Because I personally, personally have never heard of this happening. And it seems like it happened to you on a very important game, which I understand. That's heartbreaking stuff like that. But what did you do? Like, were you shutting it down? Why weren't you using the cloud save function? You know what I mean? Like, there's oh, a bunch this of is stuff a fun you- thing, oh, Greg. Greg is Vita blaming Because right cloud save functions don't work on the Vita that I have for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> See, and that's where I'm like, is it – now, Barrett, I know you're a smart man, but sometimes we overlook something. When you went, Before you clicked on Persona to play in the Vita, right next to it was like Super Mario Brothers World. There. Like, is this a hacked Vita? No, it's not a hacked Vita. Vita. Like, I, like, I, I, I technically did like a – I did a software refresh because it was like the person's – like, it was the old person like account that was like on that vita and so sure, i had to look sure, up like sure. all right how to re- like how to like refresh the software like reset the software so i can log in connect it to my account do all this stuff. like it wasn't a hacked vita or anything uh, it sounds it was, like i can go to the store and download games and shit but for whatever reason the only online function that, that did not work on this vita was cloud saving for whatever reason it sounds like when I was in high school and like I had a I had a friend in high school that like sold iPods and I never questioned it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like a sophomore and he was like a junior. He was like, Oh yeah, I got iPods that I sell. And I was like, Oh yeah, how much is this iPod Nano? Like 30 gigs. He's like, Oh, just give me 30 bucks for it. And I was like, Oh, that seems low, <laughs> but yeah, I'll take that. And he, and, he, and he sold it to me and like somebody else's music was on it and like somebody else's videos, and I was like, sure. huh. That's peculiar, and I yeah, I started Erase, using it. Hard reset. You're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's weird. And like, oh, you look up, look on the back of the iPod, and it's like the serial numbers like scratched out and shit. Again, I didn't question it. I was like, oh man, I don't yeah, know, man. Off a truck by any chance? Is that it's, how oh, he came well, into all these? How he, I'm, he came into it somehow, but that is what Barrett is describing. Uh, well, how what Barrett is describing is similar. What I'm describing, like uh, Barrett, I'll stop right because it's an untrustworthy function. Vita. Is what Barrett, you're describing. I'll stop right there. Oh. I don't agree. I don't agree with busting. I don't agree with busting. That's not what you're describing. I can't black market Vita. <laughs> we're, it's we're a normal turn, functioning fucking Vita. Ex- we're going to turn to Janet Garcia and let her decide who should apologize here. Me on behalf of the Vita or you to the Vita. Janet, here's the real thing of what's happened. If I went to an upscale establishment like the Olive Garden. And instead of walking in the front door, I walked to the dumpster and ate out of the dumpster. Then I went home and got sick. Is it my right to blame the Olive okay, Garden? First of all, you're using the wrong metaphor for the wrong person because I had I don't really have Olive Garden almost ever. But I got like like my boyfriend was going to Olive Garden. He's like, oh, do you want anything? I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll take this like lunch size pasta. I'm like, damn, eleven dollars for a lunch size pasta. It's small as hell. And it straight up tasted like something I couldn't have made when i am not trying so i don't know what's going on with the olive garden to begin with so i would not compare the vita to the olive garden because that's just all right what's far. your favorite restaurant I, what if i ate at the dumpster outside your favorite restaurant Jan? am i allowed <laughs> to blame the restaurant <laughs> um no but that's like not what we're talking about here so it's not relevant i don't think anyone needs to apologize to anyone i think y'all each need to get over your own shit that you're bringing here that has nothing to do with anybody involved um 
Barrett, if you can't love again with the Vita, I can understand that, but I feel like it's time for you to like heal and be ready to be hurt again. Cause like, that's the process of gaming. Mm. Um, mm. And then Greg, I, I don't know, just stop gaslighting people. Like, you know, a simple <laughs> no would have sufficed. You know what, Janet? Like, am I really gaslighting people? Or are you really the problem? That's the question God, we have. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. No. <laughs> Janet sounded real crazy with the thing she's saying. Um, <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is PS I Love You XOXO each and every week. Blessing Janet, Barrett, and myself come together to nerd out about all things PlayStation. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get each and every episode or ad free you could watch us record it that early you could read all right in to be part of the show you can get the exclusive post show we do it's a dynamite wing bang bang boom deal over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games however if you have no bucks to toss our way no big deal you can get each and every episode of ps i love you xoxo on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every tuesday morning of course if you're getting one of the free versions no uh post show you have to listen to the ads but you still have a good time now, speaking of Patreon, let's get into housekeeping. Right now, oh, if you went to Patreon right now, right now, new no, now, right now, if you went to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and supported us at the platinum tier level, you could get the cool platinum tier perk that is a brand new t-shirt. That's right. We, of course, do a physical item for platinum tier subscribers. Uh, right now, it is a return to madness, the shirt celebrating my return from paternity leave. Uh, it is made by Campfire Designs. It is awesome. Bear is showing it right now. Uh, of course, uh, I'm sure Blessing looks at that and goes, why is Greg look like Sting? But Janet, of course, is a true Greg Miller fan and understands, of course, that a lot of people have been calling me the crow of my generation. And that is me as the crow right there. You remember the crow there you go. blessing? I, I've not heard anybody call you the crow of your generation. Uh, it was funny. You missed the, the voice memo I made for Andy then a little while back because it was it was big news. A lot of sites picked it up. That mm, okay. the crow of the yeah. generation. Yeah, surprised you missed that. Uh, of course, uh, that'd be a great time to go over there and do it because, you know, it's January, which means it's the anniversary of Kind of Funny. It's year seven of Kind of Funny. Now, usually we'd be doing a big Kind of Funny Day stream and asking a whole bunch of crazy stuff, but... We're actually not doing that this year because, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new studio coming soon. <laughs> soon. I'm not going to give you a date. You can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, it's for free. You can read a whole post over there about the fact that where we are with the studio, what's happening. Uh, we're holding off on doing our big Kind of Funny Day stream until the new studio is ready. However, we will be celebrating 7 on 7. Uh, you can come celebrate with us. 7 years of Kind of Funny, January 7th. That's Friday on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, after Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh, Snowbike Mike and this team will be streaming for many an hour going through playing some games. I know Mario Party's out there. Uh, Andy Cortez tried to talk some shit about everybody's golf, but then he, like the daffodil he is, he folded up and fell away when I challenged him. So I don't know if we're actually doing that. And I know Blessing's up to something. What were you going to play, Bless? You had something. Like oh, that. man, I think I might play Demon's Souls. Ooh. It's been a while. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. People have been asking for it. Elden Ring is around the corner, so it might be time for me to get in there. Yeah, quick sidebar. Of course, this is PS. I love you, XOXO. You know, we talk about PlayStation. We nerd out about it. Am I here's a blessing? I come to you, mm -hmm. Janet. You're here too. All right. He's like yeah. he's on the throne. You're off to the side. You're like his protector. You've got the big thing, right, Barrett? You're outside eating out of a dumpster. <laughs> you're, this is all a no, I went, <laughs> you're eating, eating, I went into people. the front door and I, you know, you're, I converted like my money into the here, into the Vita <laughs> currency and I paid them directly. Okay, Greg, I don't like this dumpster diving analogy that you've come up with because it's bullshit. <laughs> I like that you're eating a hoagie one. <laughs> Whatever you're eating in here, I love it. I'm eating pizza. Oh, Maybe damn. I found it in a dumpster. You'll never know. <laughs> as long as you don't blame the pizzeria afterwards, it'll be fine. Uh, bl uh, blessing. Mm. Uh, Janet, am I allowed to be excited for Elden Ring? Because, like, as you know, I've never oh, been a Souls man. person. I, I beat Bloodborne. It was a big thing to go through and do it on the streams or whatever. But, like... The open world nature of Elden Ring seems like it might pair well with my uh, ideas. Here's the thing. According, according to Andy and Tamora, because we did a whole game uh, games cast episode about it because they uh -huh. got to preview Elden Ring. We talked all about it. And they were saying that this might be one of the more approachable uh, 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 games from From Software, just in terms of like difficulty and how like I think the big complaint for many people trying to get into the games is that the games are just hard. Uh, and that was a big thing for me, where I by the time I finally got into Bloodborne, you know, it took a lot of perseverance and me pushing through like the hard parts of that game to go, sure. okay, I get this now. Okay, this is clicked. And I know like you've gone through Bloodborne as well, so you know what that process is like too. Uh, it seems like Elden Ring might be a little bit easier. Maybe not easier, but like at the very least, I think it onboards you better 
in a way that you might find yourself enjoying it more out the gate as opposed to like maybe struggling with it was never the difficulty of it it was just like the disjointed nature of it like didn't work for Mm. me but if it's this giant open sweeping thing like i'm playing valhalla right now uh, you know and i'm just running around killing shit and i'm not even caring about the story because the gameplay is good the gameplay has always been good in souls games i'm wondering yeah and also i i mean people compare every open world game to this but i've been seeing and hearing a lot of breath of the wild comparisons that i know that that you like breath of the wild and i think it's more so the thing of you know there is the combat aspect of it but i I think there's gonna be a lot of exploration and a lot of like oh there's like this thing that's like there's a weird horse creature that's like (laughs) frolicking across the land let me me follow that and see where it's going and see where that leads me that then leads me to like another adventure that you go on it seems like there's going to be a lot of that which appeals to me and has me super excited and i think that will probably appeal to somebody like you janet are you excited what's your elden ring um excited's a little too strong but i am looking forward to it um yep. my souls background is just i've only played demon souls that's the only one i beat demon souls i did that last year uh i liked it but i also cheesed the hell out of it sure through, i did it like, with bloodborne people too. coming through and like handing me magic herbs or i forgot what the items are right like you know me getting the taking off all my armor and cartwheeling over to a powerful sword and like level three even though i'm like which one's the three and they're like the one with the weird crest thing the whole structure (laughs) was a lot to parse out without help from chat um but i did enjoy my time with it uh it was fun to kind of overcome that and i think for me what's excite why i feel like anyone's allowed to be excited even if like ultimately you don't you don't play it or it doesn't click for you is one hey that's just part of it like I don't know how many games I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to play this. And then it comes out and I'm like, yeah, I never I never got around to it. It didn't it didn't work out. That's just part of of being a fan of of games. games yeah. But for me, what's really exciting is that this is going to be a big release. This is going to be un- unless it like, totally flops for some reason. It's going to be on everyone's like end of year list. Like a lot of people there's like I'm I'm excited because of how everyone else is excited about it. I know sure. it's going to be a big talking point. And I'm interested in approaching it from, you know, my own perspective, as with anything, and seeing, you know, what I have to say about it, what I think about it, and seeing what the conversations are like around this one. So what I'm excited about is being there from when it's starting. Because for me, like, I kind of didn't really pay attention to, like, all the soul stuff. And then it kind of was always just running in the background where there's people that, you know, love these games so much that they're still being talked about. But now it's like, what is it going to be like to be there active playing at release? Sure, sure, sure. The secrets coming out. Like, that's what I'm excited about. Like the cultural event of Elden Ring more so than the game itself and the particulars of the game. Now, Barrett, I sent you a link, uh, a very special link to a very important thing I put up this morning. Let him show uh, some of the stuff. I, and let, he don't even need. Oh, hold on, I hit the wrong button. Oh god! <laughs> oh no! Wait, Greg is shrinking. What's going on here? <laughs> they can't see. They did. Ah, oh, you showed it, Barrett. My embarrassment. I have a standing desk and I hit the button. Uh, you don't even need to bring up the link, Barrett. I have it right here. It's a blessing, oh. super fun list here. Look the Blessing that. super like fun game CBS release calendar comparison. Now, it was Brett, the you, same thing. Every year, Blessing puts up this thing of games he's excited for with a date. You click on it, it's, poof, you can't even read it. because You so could small. have asked me for the Google Docs. Like The reason why it's like that is because I go to my phone and then screenshot it and then click the down arrow and then like it, it uh, Blessing, screenshots Blessing, if it you're vertically. friends with LeBron James and you see him have mm-hmm. a great game, do you immediately call him when he's in the locker room and you're like, hey, can you send me your headband? No. You take that's a, a screenshot that's, that's an nft and that's what i did here all right don't worry. that's a good point now you know you mentioned your excitement for Elden Ring. you mentioned like the hype for it and like how it's going to be in people's end of the year year list i think i've been thinking about a lot is like how are we going to cover this game how am i going to cover this game because i know sure. like when i look at it you know who's going to play Elden Ring? kind of funny andy cortez is going to play it i'm sure Tamor is going to is going to play it and then come over and talk about it with us sure um but the wrinkle here is that Horizon Forbidden West comes out February 18th and Elden Ring comes out the 25th. And then also Dying Light 2, another big open world game, comes out February 4th. Wait, you don't think you're going to touch Dying Light 2? I, I couldn't, and I hope to be proven wrong. I hope every game's great. I could not be less exciting for Dying Light 2. And granted, it's because I've heard about Dying Light 2 for years and years and years and years and years. And I've seen it behind closed doors at E3 and I get an email about it every goddamn day. Nothing about it they've said makes me go, fuck, I got to play Dying Light 2. Like Dying Light that. 1 was good because it was good, period. It, and it was great and it got so much hype because of when it came out. Just a dead spring or, or I get winter because it was like January, February where nothing was happening. I think with all this around it, not a chance that, yeah. I'll, be, that I'll be excited for. It. Don't get me wrong. If you're excited for it, go for it. Well, I, I was excited for Dying Light 2. And I think I hit the point where they've overshown it in a way where I've seen so much that's made me go, uh, okay, well, I'm excited for these aspects. Like when they showed a few years ago, uh, you being being able to change certain environments based on the choices you make yep. in the RPG. I'm like, oh shit, that seems really cool. But then they show more and more, and I'm just like, 
all right, yeah, this seems like an open world video game. But I'm holding out hope that maybe it hits and it's fantastic and that we all get into it. It's and another like, thing, I mean, like, again, looking at Blessing Super Fun uh, Game Release Calendar 2022, available at twitter.com slash Blessing Junior. Mm -hmm. Like, it does, again, have a nice-ish release right january you have god of war rainbow six and pokemon yeah and then, there's uncharted and, january too which i'm i don't plan to play but i'm sure plenty of people here play sure. dying light 2 then it's february 4th right and then you have in terms of comparisons a run up till february 18th with horizon but it's like even but even then i look at this and it's like sifu comes out february 8th and i'm, I'm like yep. i'm way more about that so i am i gonna do, do four days of dying light just to play something or will in this day and age i still be playing valhalla will i want to check in on avengers or fortnite or whatever ongoing game you're playing i'm playing and that's my thing is i look at this calendar and i'm like i'm for sure gonna play sifu based on my yeah. preview i love the sifu preview that i did all the ollie world looking back uh and like for for when making this list i went back and i, I watched trailers and like try to like um remind myself what these games look like and how excited i am for these games all the ollie world uh re-watching the trailer i was like Oh yeah, I do like the, those skateboarding games, right? Like I played so much Skater XL, and I do like 2D platformers, and, and I do like things like Mario Maker. And Ali Ali World seems like like it's going to encompass so many elements of all of those things. I plan to get super into Ali Ali World, and then even Rumbleverse, which I know isn't a game for everybody. That looks like it might be a game for me. I like a battle royale. I like the melee based battle royale. Is battle that the, that's the Iron Galaxy one? That got that is the, the Iron Galaxy Wars? one. Okay. Yeah, and that looks really cool, and that is coming out on February 15th. And then, you know, talking again about content and, like, the games we're going to play and probably review, you know, Andy and Tamor are probably going to play Elden Ring. Tim is probably going to play Horizon Forbidden West. Greg, you're probably for sure going to play Horizon Forbidden West. I imagine Jan is going to play Horizon probably Forbidden West. Probably for sure. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to play it. I'm going to platinum it. <laughs> but, like, are you going to play it and Elden Ring is, is the thing. Two big open world games that are time You'll consuming. just have to really play Horizon. You know what I mean? Obviously, this is all also that contingent game. on if, you know, to peek behind the curtain, if behind the scenes, you know, this is a, the public calendar. I don't know if what the code situation is going to be like for yep. any of these games, which yep. can, you know, obviously that can be good because it's like, oh, if you get something early, but then it's like it there's like that weird like mystery private calendar that may or may not happen, which is like a weird part of the job. Yeah. But I, I think it really would take you just playing an insane amount of horizon like I, I feel like in order to play those games together the easiest thing is to just binge horizon so that you have like at least space to do elden ring because i feel like playing two open world games like that at once might be i don't put that much. past greg also i think i could see greg playing it during review and maybe even platinuming horizon during review and then by the time official release comes to elden ring that's when he probably jumps into it i what i think will happen is i'm trying to see if I can, I, I, a long time ago, I had to change my Gmail settings because I started, uh, you know, having too much stuff going on. So I'm trying to see how far back my email goes to see if I can find out when we got codes for Horizon Zero Dawn. Because I don't remember having a gun to my head for Horizon. No, I, I can't tell you. I don't have it that far back. But I didn't have, there, we didn't have a gun to our head to play Horizon Zero Dawn all the way through. And so like that, I never felt like Rush and everything. So it could work out that Maybe not for the review period of Elden Ring that I'm able to beat it, but it could work out that I beat Horizon and then I'm able to switch over just to play Elden Ring. But I do think what would probably happen then is that, for me personally, that I won't platinum Horizon, I'll beat Horizon, then switch over to Elden Ring, and then eventually have to come back to Horizon to clean up whatever trophies I need to clean up. That makes sense. Yeah. Either way, like February is stacked. I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing. I don't, Jana. I, I forget. Did you say that you're gonna check out Elden Ring? Yeah. Okay, I can't wait to to like talk about it with y'all and like you know geek out about it on this podcast or not geek out geek out about it depending on how we feel about it because like yeah like February again is the most stacked month I've seen in a long while I'd say. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, and again, we're this is PS Love. We should get to talk and have fun. I'm not even through the fucking yeah. housekeeping yet. But I saw somebody already go by in the chat. When are you guys? Are you of course I see Janet all the time. Because Janet's on top of it. If you're not following Janet, she's a great follow on Twitter. She's putting Thanks. up all of her Horizon uh, Zero Dawn video clips. When is the Horizon Zero Dawn book club? Are we deciding that Ooh. right now? Do we pick a date? While we I don't probably, think we pick a date. We could pick we a date. We should probably do it pretty soon. Um, I will say that like I have a good chunk of the game left to go, but it's also because I'm trying to platinum it. So I feel yeah, like I've yeah, dug too, too deep with how I've like the amount of hours I have in this game. I mean, at least according to PlayStation, which PlayStation doesn't know how to tell time. For some reason awful it's awful. like it's like 30 i don't know 30 to 40 plus but i'm only like i looked at uh like a guide of just the main quest objectives i'm like halfway through the main quest but i feel like i could if i wanted to i could just finish the main quest i'm not sure golden how many path hours goes quick yeah golden path goes quick. i have left but 
Um, it's hilarious because I'm like insanely over leveled everywhere too. I'm like, time to hit up this level four in <laughs> bandit camp at level 40. And um, ah. yeah, it's um, it's been fun though. I've been liking, I like playing it this way. Um, and I've just been playing it in really big chunks. Like I'll probably, that'll probably be most of my like night to night and I think my next couple days. So I think I can knock it out even with how I'm playing it fairly soon. And I have good news. I have finished uh, Frozen Wilds. Uh, really? Yeah. It turns out like main, I am surprised. Main, mainlining I'm surprised. the the. Hey, listen. You know, you give me a game to play on one of these hashtags. Well, yes, we play this. This was your assignment. I'm. You, get, I'm you glad give me you a game it. to play. I'm gonna play and finish that game all day. How far are you in Days Why? Gone? Yeah, what's going well, on? Days Gone. Yeah. We don't talk about Days Gone on this podcast. This is a PlayStation podcast. I've never heard of no, Days Gone. No, we don't talk about Bruno Blessing. Who's Bruno? I watched that over my break as well. Mm. Encanto. Um, Encanto. Encanto, plus, yeah. yeah. Um, Drop yeah, on I haven't, I haven't seen it. Yeah. I heard Janet didn't mm. like that movie, and so I didn't watch it. It was just, mm, it didn't hit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I do, I, I want to play a little bit more of it because like mainlining it was actually way more quicker than I expected. Um, so I want to do some more just general wanna, quests in Horizon, but I'm down can, to talk about it whenever. You had a you had an interesting idea that we're not going to talk about here. We're talking about tomorrow in a different meeting or whatever. So mm -hmm. if that came together, that could be next week's, and then we could do Horizon on the 17th. That works. Seventeenth episode one hundred three. If that works for people, of I'm course, ladies and gentlemen. If there's some kind of breaking news, you know what I mean. Then, or well, we'll still cover the news. Anyways, if something changes, something changes. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, set your swatches. January seventeenth. Peace. I love you. XOXO will be the Horizon Zero Dawn book club or whatever. And you might say, "What do you mean the seventeenth? That's a Monday." If you're on Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, you're watching live right now. You can be part of it right now, just like our Patreon producers, James Davis, aka at James Davis Makes. Praise for Tillo, Greg Miller's back and better than ever. Prankski, uh, Delaney Twinning, Tyler Ross, First Responder ND, Julian the Gluten Free Gamer, James Hastings again. No, James Hastings the first time. I apologize. Casey Andrews. Uh, we're brought to you by Upstart, Raycon, and Express v VPN. But we'll tell you about that later. For now, blessing at a question. What was your question? Oh yeah. Well, first. Well, shout out to first responder nd i don't know if you're a real first responder but if you are great respect uh but also greg i know you've been gone for a while and so I like have, you're coming back and you're like on fire you're killing it i watched kfg you're amazing i do want to yeah. remind people out there that of course you, you see my use... fake baby i did see the fake baby when you threw it i, I... want to see my fake baby oh do i want to see your That's fake so baby so... I've... what i'm not even gonna ask any questions <laughs> when you did the thing on kfg when i tell you that my heart bursted on my chest i was like oh god no please <laughs> please i went back and watched the twitch archive just to see and like so many people were like as soon as i pop out they're like that's a fake baby why did he have a fake baby the thing is like i was listening i was like listening to it like i had the twitch up but i was like you know it was in the background and i look as soon as like you toss the baby and i'm like god no please uh but i do remind people out there that of course you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel just want to throw that out there for people that goes on this show that's on every show now huh? it's on okay. every single okay, show okay yeah. cool yeah I, I tim corrected me during the ads on games daily that i didn't do that i was like oh because it was in like your section like you write out everything whereas i ad lib it and so since i haven't mm -hmm. ad libbed it in there now i won't do it again thanks everybody yeah of course I got you Epic creator code kind of fun use it it's great we love it it's help it helps us and doesn't do anything different for you it's just great do it uh for now let's start the show with topic of the show it is 2022 janet and blessing and that means we need to predict what playstation is going to get up to in 2022 uh i will start with this question janet is playstation's 2022 gonna be bad fine or great that's this is like a really big jump there i'm gonna go with yeah, great um you, I mean, tell I think, me you know erase it from your head and what do you think it's gonna be is it, how's it gonna shake out this year um i, I mean I, I probably would still lean on great maybe even better than great because i think if they do what they are set up to do which is you know i did the biggest thing is being horizon and god of war i think dropping those two in the same calendar year is like an automatic huge win um yeah. pretty much any like of the big three when they come out with like whatever their S tier or A team or however you want to think of it, first string, whatever metaphor you want to use, when those drop, it's very rare for those to not be high quality games. So like that's when it's it's going to be like the big shining thing. Uh, and obviously, again, you know, we have this conversation all the time with like weak years or strong years. And I know some people take issues with like, you know, calling 2021 a weak year because there are so many fun games. And yes, there's great games every year. There are amazing games I've never played that I've never heard of, of course. However, I think we all know that there is like a certain, you know, tier to what all companies have. And I feel like even though there's a great year for PlayStation in 2021 in a lot of ways, I think Horizon and God of War really transcends what they do in a lot of ways. And is sort of like, you know, an example of what they do best. So I think if they bring those out, those are fire. 
it's only all oh, everything else is just going to be additive like if they do have like good indies and then they have they also have spot like sure. there's sure, so sure, much sure, potential sure, sure. um that being said there's also of course like if you don't execute on those things it could be a flop but i think they are set up for a really successful year blessing what do you think i want to answer your question with the question what would you consider 2021 to be was that a great year was that a good year was that an incredible year <sighs> i wasn't prepared i wasn't prepared um it's hard to say because I think what Janet just tipped on or tiptoed on is in a, I guess, tr what she just mentioned. Uh, none of those were where I wanted to go. What she just mentioned is true, right? Where it was, ah, oh, 2021 was a weak year for games. And what I really think is, is it's a, it was an, a weird year, right? It, it, to what Janet's talking about and what I've talked about before too, is it was a year without the AAA, this is clearly a game of the year, but what about this AAA game? And that's great to see a conversation. I've loved, like, the 2021 is one of those years I love because then I love looking at MinMax, uh, IGN, GameSpot, and seeing what their game of the years were and them not all being the same thing. Them not just universally being Breath of the Wild, universally being uh, God of War or whatever. Um, and so looking at it through that lens, you also have on top of it the pandemic, right? And I think what's really interesting is I asked a whole bunch of questions on patreon.com slash kind of funny games for people to be part of the show of uh, that I wanted to discuss with you, but then bring in their stuff. And so many people called out, you know, for 2022, it hinging on the supply chain, right? How many PS5s can they get into the wild? What happens with that? What has that done to PlayStation VR's plans? What? And you start adding that on and even looking at last year, it gets so weird where last year was a good, maybe great, and it would be like, like you know, on the IGN scale, like maybe a flat 8.0 year for PlayStation, right? You have Ratchet, you have Returnal, you have them picking these things up. And it's also then really, what are we talking about? Are we talking about you as a PlayStation player and what you played or PlayStation as a company as we start talking about the announcements, this Discord partnership, uh, Wolverine, Spider-Man 2, like these things that they piled on but weren't bearing fruit necessarily for you in the actual calendar year. That's where it starts shaking out, where I think if you're a PlayStation owner, it was a good year. It was a great year. You know, what I mean? yeah, you had fun. You had you had plenty of stuff to play. You had like Janet's talking about right now as we look to 2022. All these indies, all these things. But like, did you have the banger? Did you have a God of War, an Uncharted, a Last of Us? Mm -hmm. And I I think what makes this a bit difficult for me is that I look at 2021 and I compare it to 2022. At least where we're at so far, 2022, which is like at the beginning of the year, right? We're in the first week of January. And so looking forward is difficult because as far as the big games on the horizon, it is Horizon. And then it also is Gran Turismo and, uh, and uh, God of War Ragnarok. That is slated for 2022. But I know even us here, some of us are nervous that that game might get <laughs> pushed to 2023 possibly. And that is a thing that I could see, right? That is a thing that I think is very plausible. And when I look at this year and I compare it to last year, which last year, when you look at, when we were taking the perspective of the audience and the games that we got, and we're looking at even the first party slash exclusive games that we got, it's things like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It is Deathloop. It is Kana Bridge of Spirits. Mm -hmm. It's Returnal, right? And then it is also th other things like Chicory and other smaller games that came, that came through on PlayStation. And when I look at 2021 as, as a year on PlayStation, I think it was really good. I think, you know, 8.0 is a pretty solid place to put it. But I think in terms of preference, do I prefer 2021 where I got... A bunch of new, different, exciting, and a good like picking of games from PlayStation on the first party side and on the third party side. Or do I prefer a 2022 where it seems like the big games we're getting are God of War, Horizon, and Gran Turismo, but nothing so far that's populated around those, right? It seems like the it mid tier might indie stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the mid tier to indie stuff too, like even like the, the like, I guess. Not if if I was to call God of War and Horizon even the quadruple A of PlayStation, you know, I know quadruple A is like a made up term, but to kind of make that comparison, because Returnal, you know, I love Returnal. Returnal is probably one of my favorite PlayStation exclusives I've gotten in like recent uh, years. Returnal is I don't necessarily put that on the level of a God of War in terms of I guess the audience excitement and like the hype that goes into something like that, or even a Horizon, you know, because it is something it is a new IP, it is something that's a little bit more niche as a uh, a roguelite third person shooter, right? And like Ratchet and Clank is a is a you know family 3D action platformer that's going to speak to a lot of people, but even I don't think on the level of something like a God of War Ragnarok might. Is a God of War, God of War Ragnarok, and Horizon Forbidden West? Is that equal to me as like all these other games that we got in 2021? And the answer for me is like it's going to change from person to person. I think personally, I don't know. Like 
I'm looking forward to God of War and I'm looking forward to Horizon, but I think personally I wish there was a little bit more there of substance to like back those things up as well. So I'm not getting just these two big triple A, quadruple A PlayStation PlayStation experiences in 2022 and then nothing else Philly you will, will right? That's the way to fill like, out. You guys yeah, wouldn't like, have I talked about chicory so many, now last year. True. We have so many like things that have windows and then things we probably haven't heard about. I think the supporting cast of PlayStation's 2022 has yet to be fully like revealed. Um, but stuff like, cause I think little devil inside is like slated for now. We have uh Sifu, which is like, you already said that you enjoyed your time previewing it. I also got to preview it and enjoyed that. Um, we have other things that, you know, are potentially on the horizon, like Forspoken, like Ghostwire. Again, mm -hmm. some of those things mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel like might come out, but you know, PSVR too. Like there's so many other things that can fill out PlayStation's year that I think for me, the, what is most representative of the potential of like how high quality of a year it is is who is the headliner i think without powerful headliners it can still you can still have a really fun time at the concert like it can still or the festival <laughs> in this metaphor it can still be really enjoyable but if you don't have a real banger headliner that that's gonna limit what the ceiling is for the year for me um and i think like a lot lands on that headlining act because that is like the biggest thing that you're doing for you know again not to be dismissive of other projects like you can still have a lot of fun on playstation and with playstation games regardless of how hot the year is or not and that's the whole benefit of like having a lot of different things and having not just you know you could argue why don't you just have what if you made everything like the best tier like well first of all everyone's always trying that and that's not always possible but second of all having studios that maybe aren't necessarily like giving you horizon or god of war but they're giving you quality interesting things like that's what's going to create yeah. like a dynamic offering for your audience and i think playstation does that really well but if we're talking about what is like the banger year you got to have like the headlining stuff well, and I, this year they have the potential for those headliners i think the thing for me this this year too is just the uncertainty with it as well just because like a god of war does not does not feel real to me right now and i don't know no. I, I don't know why maybe that's just because like it's hard to imagine playing another god of war um uh like right now or maybe it's, it is because we've seen so much horizon and like we've gotten the games that they have shown for the ps5 more you know things like returnal and other games that we got last year but like now it is starting to become the time where you would show way more god of war ragnarok and that is such a game that Without a release window, right, just having the release year of 2022, it is so easy imagining that game slipping into 2023. And, like, mm -hmm. by this time last year, right, like, if, yeah, we didn't have, like, the, or at least we didn't know that we were going to be talking about games like Chicory and other games that surprised us in the year. But at the very least, we did know that we're going to get Deathloop, Kena, Returnal, and Ratchet, I think, for the most part. Um, and I, I think that granted a, a level of, like, comfortability at the start of the year where it's like oh yeah we For got sure. games and like i we thought we were going to get horizon as well right which was going to be the headliner Go, coming into this year where it's now like okay god of war is probably gonna be the headliner for fall is it like is, am i am i confident in saying that i'm not really and so for me it is so far in terms of big games on playstation this year it really is horizon and then gran turismo which you know, it's going to be a game for certain audiences. And then hopefully like things like Sifu and Forspoken Hit on level where it's like, oh yeah, let's go. We're going to cherish these things. It's PlayStation uh, audience. If I feel I'm with Janet about the headliner argument where I think the double A in the, the unexpected always fills in. That's always going to be there, right? We talk about all, even, you know, with this amazing list of games right here that you can print at home too off of twitter.com slash blessing junior. Uh, you see where it's already going to fill in with things. And, and this is just what you're excited for, let alone what might actually t turn out. I, but I think that's every year. That stuff will be there all the time. Something like Knockout City, right, that we all got obsessed with for a little bit. It, that's going to happen. Those kind of titles happen. But yeah, if you have these things to stand on, these headliners, like Janet put it, I think that really does define what's going to be and if it'll be a great year. It, yeah. And of course, then there's a lot of pressure on them to actually, number one, in the, you know this pandemic actually come out, and number two, be good. <laughs> but you hope... Yeah, and also I'm also doing like a lot of devil's advocate too, because like you know I'm talking about the perspective of first party what, exclusives. You? Oh yeah, it's a, I never I never do it, but like when I expand out into like you know things that aren't just first party, right? Like things that are third party or things that are multi platform. Then we are talking about Elden Ring. We are talking about Saints Row, which sure. is supposed to come out in in August, right? We are talking about like the Cuphead DLC, which is supposed to come out in in, in June and other games and. Right now, it is a very exciting year of video games overall. I think across platforms and like. I think we're talking about just broadly video games, period. Yeah, I think I, my prediction is that it will be a, a great year for video games. So let's get into it. We've already talked about these headliners. Uh, the first thing I asked you and then the audience as well was predict the meta score. What's going to have a better meta critic? 
Horizon Forbidden West or God of War Ragnarok. Two highly anticipated sequels, but with so much one. room to fuck it up. Okay, is it? Really? Or what's the answer yeah, there, Blood? It's God of War Ragnarok. Okay, that's what I also felt like that was the like easy answer. Cause like historically, like on the last releases, they had 89 and 93 respectively. So that's history says God of War, and I I would side with that as well. I I also think it's the it's easier for God of War being a more linear, you know, narrative cinematic game than Horizon being more of an open world action RPG. I think there's just more room for polish and more room to be like moment to moment. We're going to make this game hit as opposed to Horizon, which I think has more to do just in terms of like, you know, when you have an open world like that, where it is here, are all these narratives, here are all these side quests, here are all sure. these machines that have to like function in an open world system. There's just way more there that is hard to to polish versus a God of War, where it is like, nah, man, we're 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 catering this game moment to moment. We, you're gonna have the polish that you're looking See, forward to from this. I waffle where I, I think you need your correction. I would say God of War Ragnarok as well, but then I think there is this real conversation of expectation and then also room to grow where god of war ragnarok can't just be god of war again if it's just god of war and god of war obviously is you know 2018 it, it took the throne as my favorite game of all time like i think it's a perfect game and i don't mean perfect like you know, you know masterpiece it's a masterpiece where mm -hmm. i think people expect that and when they expect that I, I think that's incredibly hard to live up to and don't get me wrong we see people uh, developers like naughty dog i think actually live up to up to it and be able to get out there and deliver i just worry that with god of war ragnarok you're like what would you improve from god of war and if you you're like well there's not much to improve on then at what point do you not have reviewers going eh, i kind of feel samey or it's kind of doing this or blah, blah 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 whereas horizon i think was imperfect it was a great game that i really truly enjoyed but there was definitely things in this and the presentation issues that just didn't feel cinematic and i think you know we talk about this all the time on the show playstation and what the first party what playstation studios are defined as now right are these single player narrative experiences and again like looking at spider-man to spider-man miles morales like the way insomniac tweaked the cinematography and the way they told their stories i think obviously is them getting spider-man under their belts and knowing a little bit what to do but it's also looking at the rest of the studio it's also you know this culture they all breed of working with each other and talking to each other where i imagine horizon i hope Horizon Forbidden West is really going to play with that and what are expectations of it. And I really think that it has a chance to wow you. I, I Right now, when I think of these games, I think of Horizon Forbidden West and I'm like, oh, I really liked Horizon. I'm excited to play this. But I'm not like, oh, I'm dying to play this. Whereas her, God of War Ragnarok, I'm like, I can't wait to see what that next story is or what the next chapter is in their story and where it's going to go, blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of feel like it's this weird balancing of scales where horizon has an easier chance of getting over with me whereas god of war could be like man all right cool it's more god of war which is cool see I am, I think, i'm i'll go for it janet yeah i was gonna kind of echo what greg brought up like i felt similarly where i still probably do lean on god of war like i've had to pick one and like you know bet money on it or something but i do have a feeling that god of war will be negligibly better or negligibly worse than god of war 2018 because like i don't know how much they would change or switch up maybe it'll just depend on like the story and where people land on whether or not they like liked it or not i'm also thinking of other games that had fire first you know again is it god of war's first game when it's like you know reboot whatever <laughs> let's let's say for the sake of this conversation like this is the first in the new era of god of war right sure. like fire game next one like i look at like last of us is metacritic and it went from 95 on the first release and 93 on the second which two points it's still in the 90s like i think we you know, at least in terms of critics, critics have agreed that they're both fantastic, you know, amazing games. But I wonder if like God of War will then subsequently have the potential to dip down to maybe like a 90 and Horizon ends up getting like a 91 or something. Because I do think playing, having played Horizon like now um, and talking to people that either were like, wow, this makes me want to go back or this makes me want to try it. Or I now I, you know, I remember this thing or it's still my favorite game ever. Like hearing conversations from fans, like I feel like there's a lot of love for that what's now going to be a franchise and i see a lot of ways that it can be improved not that i'm not having a good time you know i don't want to spoil this the conversation we're going to have but i'm like oh man like if this is what they have and they've already talked about like some of the improvements they're going to make yeah. Yeah. like that's this is going to be you know for no pun intended this is gonna be wild like this is like they, there's a lot here to play with and do and to expand on and build um well yeah like with god of war it's like this is how do you make something dope 
better, you know, and maybe you don't have to, right? I'm not saying that every game needs to be like a big, you know, overhaul of everything and, and a revolution, but that God of War is competing more with itself than Horizon is competing with itself. Like Horizon is more building on right. what it has 100%. to like do another draft. And God of War, it's like, okay, well, how are you going to make it like, you know, why should I care? Like you need to, you know, there's a more expectation on God of War. Yeah, I agree. I agree with both you guys. I think when it comes to Metacritic score, that's where the conversation gets a bit more interesting because I, if you come out and you make God of War 2018 again, in the eyes of like somebody reviewing and having to put a number on that, I think it gets a little bit more tricky in terms of like, all right, do I knock it because it's more of a masterpiece, or like, does the does the score get weighted a little bit more on narrative than a, uh, on gameplay mechanics? If you know mechanically it is very similar, but it has you know some tweak tweaks and improvements here and there, and then because of the power of the PS5, or at least like the upgrades we'll get on PS5 on the PS5 version versus the PS4 version, it might run smoother, look better, all these things. Is that is getting that game going to, I guess, cut down the review score at all? I think that is that that becomes my question because I think, in terms of the Horizon versus God of War thing and how they're kind of competing with themselves versus uh, competing with each other, to what you guys are saying, I've had the same thoughts, but more so in terms of game of the year conversation and how those games live in my heart. I think Horizon Forbidden West has way more of a space to be a more special game to me because it seems like from the the gameplay we've gotten from uh the playstation state of play that we got last spring uh and more of what they've shown and talked about on the, on the playstation blog and other places it seemed like it seems like they're going for it in a lot of ways and all the things they talk about and all the things that they're improving are things that really speak to me as somebody who played horizon zero dawn and loved it but also wanted way more in terms of like oh man i wish the game uh like Oh, I wish the, com the melee combat was better in some places. Man, I wish they uh, the exploration felt more dynamic. Man, I wish they added things like, uh, well, I didn't necessarily say that I wanted to glider climbing, but they're adding that shit anyway, right? And that shit is going to speak to me a lot. Uh, it seems like they're doing so much that is going to speak to me as somebody who wanted more for, for Horizon Zero Dawn that I very much see that game coming out. Well, I hope the game comes out and blows me away. I think it really does have the chance to versus God of War Ragnarok where... Right now, my expectation for Ragnarok is for it to be, you know, the sequel to God of War 2018, which is, you know, more of the same. Give me a, a story that blows me away. And if you do that, then, you know, on a crit, on a crit, in a critical lens, I think those are the boxes you check and it works for me. But then on a, you know, long living memory, like years down the line, when I'm thinking back to God of War, I'm still probably going to think back to God of War 2018 versus for yeah. Horizon. I could see Horizon Forbidden West being the peak of Horizon if Horizon Forbidden West nails all of what's, what it's going for. I mean, even as we watch this Horizon footage, Barris got pulled up, right? Like, this just looks awesome. It looks, yeah. fun. not that I'm saying God of War won't look fun, but like, I think that there's an interesting, again, expectation where we watch this and I'm like, holy shit, this looks great. And like, the God of War footage we saw just before this, right? Remember when, you know, armchair quarterbacks on Twitter broke out the them pushing the boat in the water and we're like, it's the same animation. It's like, that's the kind of expectation that's up for these games of what you're doing. Yeah. Like, whereas I don't know horizon well enough even though i platinumed it and loved it to tell you if it was the same animation of her knocking notching the bow or whatever right like and i think janet you know you bringing up the last of us metacritic is a really great salient point as well of like i if we there's an expectation for god of war now because of god of war there was an expectation for last of us because of last of us and so stick with me i want to make a, a bold statement i'm sure someone will hate me for it before, even after i explain it but like I don't think, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but I don't think anyone can sit there and say the, mechanically that Last of Us was better than Last of Us Part 2. Like, Last of Us Part 2 plays mm -hmm. so fucking well. Take away all the story stuff. Take away all the stuff. Like, the way it plays, the way it feels, the way it looks, all that is so much better than Last of Us Part 1. But you had an expectation of who Joel and Ellie were. And so when you get into this game and they do something different, they go off and tell a story that was reflected, I think, uh, in terms of the review scores, as it should be, because it is not just gameplay that we're reviewing. You're reviewing the entire experience. And so God of War, I could see something very similar where God of War 2018 breaks out because guess what? Kratos, this guy who just you know, tore off people's heads and screamed and fucked people, he's actually got depth now and he's got this. He's got a son and this is what they're doing. You go through this whole journey with him. And so now you've been able to sit there for four years with that in your head and really, as always, have that get put on a pedestal because it's not like you're playing it every week, right? Like you have all these rose tinted glasses moments of it. And now you're going to get that again with God of War 2. But what if they go in this different thing? What if this happens? What, like, there's so many ways that could blow up in their face. Whereas, again, to Horizon's credit, 
horizon was holy shit an open world rpg exclusive to playstation from the people who made kill zone like th- this doesn't sound in favor like it should be good oh my god it's great this is so much fun and now it's like if they can come out and really dominate with that and you know have another cinematic awesome first uh, uh single player story you know i think that has a better chance of winning and then like you're talking about blessing as we watch the glider footage here like Again, if that if that game was already fun to play, if they've now gone in and removed some of the points of friction that made it not fun to play or traverse, then yeah. again, it's it's going to be like what I'm talking about with Valhalla for me personally lately, where it's just like, cool. Even if you're not into the story, you're having fun running around and killing these dinosaurs. Yeah, and like on a on a related but unrelated note, a little bit un- unrelated to like the top the like question slash topic, you know, you mentioned in God of War Ragnarok and like the things that it could do with story and how that could rub people the wrong way or maybe you know l- lend to a lot of the audience going, oh man, this isn't the Kratos I know, or oh man, I wish they didn't do that or whatever. I mean, I I I I kind of hope that that is the case just in terms of they do something wild and different something unexpected with the characters because i think that is the thing that would lend to god of war ragnarok being something that i remember uh you know separately from god of war 2018 because i think it needs something like that to like actually stick out in people's heads and actually be like oh shit like god of war ragnarok is this god of war game versus oh it's the continuation to god of war 2018 and remember that they made a point of saying like this is the end of like the norse era as well yeah and yes, I, I, no. I feel like they're they're definitely going in with the mindset of, of what people have expectations for and how they need to continue slash wrap things up uh in story in a story sense in a mechanical sense i definitely if i had to put money on and I don't, this is a weird thing to put money on but i could definitely see ragnarok being having like a ride in moment where it's like even the footage I was we thinking have seen, the same thing like i was literally yep yep all the yep. footage we've seen of it, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but for me, it does look like God of War to the point that if I wasn't super fresh and I'm not super fresh on 2018 anymore, you could probably trick me and show me something. I'd be like, remember this from God of War? Like, I guess. And like, nah, fuck you. It's from Ragnarok. Oh my God. Like, I feel like they could be showing us a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to turn a corner in that game and it's going to suddenly be dramatically different, but they're hiding all that. Yeah. I mean, that makes so much sense, right? For how little we've seen. And of course, like, Part of that is also the game's just not the Tiny. game's far off, you know. And yeah. now it's now it's twenty twenty two, and so maybe we see more of it. But you know, like if they were gonna do the writing thing and have it be like, okay, yeah, a third into this game, you're now playing as a uh, Atreus because Kratos is gone, or it is like some j- j- just something we don't expect. You're playing as Thor now. Um, uh, that go could kill be Kratos. That could be a oh a, my like, god, <laughs> go kill. Oh my god, yeah, that Yo. could be something that is that that sticks with people and that could be like the big another big god of war moment in the way that god of war 2018 was a big god of war moment and i'd be all about that i think that that could be the x factor that people are kind of missing in the way that you know you watch certain trailers for like movies or games or or shows where it's like i don't know something's off about this trailer and there's a reason for that because in the final thing like in infinity war where it's like oh man where is hulk like or why (laughs) oh hulk's in the shot then you watch the movie it's like hulk is not in the shot you know i'll love for god of war to do something similar and I, but again, right? Like that to this Metacritic argument, that would be then super polarizing. Where yeah. there'd be plenty of, if if it was all of a sudden that yeah, you know, we do a whole bunch of stuff, and then there's like a fade out, and it fades in, and it's you picking, it's you know, picking up Thor's hammer, and then you are Thor. So many people would be fucking pissed. I but we think it's cool, probably. But like back and forth, there you go. Who knows? Um. Uh, by the way, the audience was with you. I asked, of course, and it, what is it? It seems like overwhelmingly, it was uh, people think God of War Ragnarok will have the the better review score there so we i will think they both see. end with a 93 Ooh, a prediction oh. game okay barrett i see your heads out. i'm putting this down here barrett says both are gonna get <sighs> can you imagine getting two big plays playstation first party games like that are 93 on metacritic that alone would be a dope year that'll make that'll make me take everything i said back in the previous question <laughs> <laughs> blessing and janet do you know are you clear your heads what are you thinking they're gonna get for metacritic god what did 2018 As, get again i was gonna say 2018 uh, god of War, 93 god like rising wait, 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 god of war where are you like rising got an 89 right yeah i got credit. that and then yeah. god of war got 93 94 right now for me oh. on playstation 4 god of war what? someone reviewed it since <laughs> 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 a later <laughs> game <laughs> review came I through like, what? I don't know, maybe i was looking at the wrong i don't know whatever it's, it's like a one point difference yeah exactly <sighs> so yeah I, I, i'm looking at Metacritic right now i got a 94 i don't for know god of man war. like mm-hmm. i just don't know if i'm wondering will people think well the overall critic consensus be hotter on God of War, the new God of War than the last one. And I don't know. It's like so rare to get like high up there. Um, and I'm looking at like 
<laughs> again, bring up Breath of the Wild. But like Breath of the Wild's Metacritic is 97, which is insanely high. Um, now that's not deserved, but you know. Uh, God, God of War. God of War gets a a 94 again. Woo! Whoa. And Horizon gets a 92. Okay. I'm going to say God of War gets a 92. Horizon gets a 90. And then I'm saying uh, I put 90 for Horizon, 91 for God of War. Paris no one likes that guy. Just, not just one point of a... Hey, I already written it. One dollar, Tom. It. I already wrote it. <laughs> one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this leads to an interesting uh, prediction question I had in here. Then I said, so what's the biggest victory for the company going to be? What's the biggest victory for PlayStation in 2022? Uh, I want you guys to stew on it. I know we already, I had you ahead of time, but I also have questions or answers here from the audience. Uh, all aircraft report wrote in and said on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, discord integration, really banking on this being a smooth addition, but done well, I could see it be one of PlayStation 5's defining features. Imagine if they nail video and image uploading to discord or even streaming. I will eat the fucking cardboard container of coffee if playstation nails discord like we talked about it we yeah. know discord is getting some kind of integration with playstation this year at least that, that was what they announced when they put the minority stakeholder ship into it who knows what pandemic has done to that but i just can't see in 2022 them nailing discord i hope they do i'd fucking love that that'd be amazing but i just can't see them actually having all the features and having it be complete like i just see it being a an app that is not nearly as well rounded as the app we're using right now to record the show janet yeah, I probably am also pretty hesitant just because I think it just takes a while for like companies and people to learn the technology and also like learn the market. Um, now that they haven't done research, I'm sure they are like well versed in what they're getting into. But I, I feel like I'm thinking about even the PS5 like launch, like with the UI and everything and the features. And I think the the big thing here is the idea of like this a smooth addition or like it being really good. I just don't think they'll knock it out of the park immediately. Like, I think there'll be maybe some good things and then some things that are annoying or that we want changed. And I think over time, it could become that, but I'd be shocked yeah. if at launch people were like, this has no problem. It works better than I ever thought it could. Like, it just doesn't seem likely. Over yeah. time, I definitely can see them add stuff to it. But out the gate, having image and video uploading streaming, no. Yeah, having it improve over time and like, five years later finally being the discord integration that we all want is that feels like a very playstation thing in the way that it's, that it's like oh yeah years later we get folders on ps4 years later we playstation get, 6 like, you know the discord yeah. integration but then That's on playstation really 6 at launch oh it's all the way back to the start let's yeah, reset just, this so thing and run it back maybe we'll get Why folders not? later on in, th in themes and the things that i missed from the ps4 but yeah I'm, I'm i'm right there with you that like i don't think it will be a win in 2022 oh my god we're in 2022 i don't yep. i it won't be a big win in 2022 but i do hope that it is like a Oh man, this is nice to have. Oh man, I can talk to my friends that are on PC, fingers crossed, and like, you know, do all, all those things. But I think it will probably be missing a lot of features out the gate that people are might be surprised about. Uh, JC wrote in and said PSVR 2. Uh, Sony will reinvigorate the home VR market with cheap but powerful hardware, a suite of great games, and an innovative controller. They also remain unchallenged in the VR space when it comes to consoles. So it's a smart move to continue to leverage that advantage with better hardware. While we're here, I had, we're even into what you guys think the big victory might be for PlayStation in 2022. I put on my list of questions for you. Does PlayStation VR 2 come out in 2022? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. I, yeah. I, for the longest time, I thought so. For the longest time, I was like, yeah, it's fall 2022. It makes sense. Follow up on the PS5 launch. It's going to be successful. All these things. We're with where we're at in materials and, yep. and um, like chips and the shortages of PS5 and just hardware in general and how that stuff is supposed to extend uh, into late this year and even into 2023. I think they're they're at now. I forget um, what analyst yeah, made headlines while I was gone saying, yeah, he thought it was going to go till 2023. Yeah, like till 2023. And it seems like you know, I wouldn't put it past it to be like uh, by the end of this year for them to go, oh, yeah, it's going to extend into 2024, right? It seems like there's no definitive answer on when this stuff is going to end. Yeah. It is so difficult for me to think both on a manufacturing sense, but then also on a, hey, does it make sense to sell this right now sense of putting this out in fall 2022 when there's probably going to be less PS5s out there than they even expected by the time they yep. want to put out uh, that PSVR. Yeah, I think you're nailing it. I, that's the same thing, too, where it's like, I think I yeah I would love JC for what you're talking about to happen of PlayStation VR doing all this and yada 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 like first off I don't think PlayStation VR two is coming out this year 
And uh, for all the reasons Blessing just said, and yeah, I think that the material shortage and the supply chain issues and the inability of them to manufacture and get PlayStation 5s out right now, like trying to explain this to my dad was crazy, who knows nothing of our world, right? But trying to explain, he's like, how are video games doing? Which is always a question you ask. And it's like, great, but like you were aware of supply chain in this. And I'm like, he's like, oh man. And I'm like, so he's like, would people buy these? I'm like, dad, people would buy these by the millions if they could get them out. And they just can't get them out. I think the fact that that's so fucked up right now delays PlayStation VR 2 even longer. And actually, honestly, I think it could be the thing that eventually leads to them not doing it. Like I know I, a long time ago on a games cast when we, I forget which predictions that we were doing years ago now, but it was like maybe for this generation, I was like, I could easily see PlayStation never doing another PlayStation VR, not because they don't want to just because like, it just doesn't come together. And this is not the way I thought it wouldn't come together, but I could easily see them eventually being like, listen, the PlayStation fives are st- not out there in the way we want them to be. The market has changed and shifted. We could delay PlayStation VR longer, and, but it just doesn't make sense to, I hope I'm not right. I hope it still comes. I hope it's awesome. But yeah, I don't see JC's uh, prediction of PSVR 2 being a victory for the company coming true. And then the final one I want to get in before I get your guys' picks was Daniel wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and said, uh, biggest victory for PlayStation, E3 reveal of Bloodborne slash Bluepoint remake or sequel. Oh, man. Yes, please, please. I hope so. I and I, I'm I'm right there with that. Like thinking about my answer, I think one of the, one of the things I came up with, or I was thinking about, was announcements for this year, sure. because there's still so much that is unknown for PlayStation's future with PlayStation Studios, the games that they have in the works. Because there are a lot of games in the works. There was that quote last year where they were like, "Hey, we have." I forget the exact number. I want to say like 20 new IPs or something. Oh, like Herman's something thing? Around yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we have this many new IPs in the works for at PlayStation Studios currently. And with all the partnerships, right, like um, uh, Deviation Studio, Jade Raymond Studio, like all the all the, the studio partnerships, let alone first-party PlayStation stuff. What is Bluepoint working on? What is, um, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, the Days Gone Studio? What are they working on? You know, what are the, the, the what, is, what is even um, Sucker Punch working on, right? Like, what are their next games? There's so much that they have in the chamber that they could announce um, that we didn't even get at the PlayStation presentation this totally. last fall that we could get maybe during a summer or during a PlayStation presentation this fall that I think Real would quick, be a big win. Uh- PlayStationLifestyle.net. I'm reading from June 3rd, 2021. PlayStation Studios has over 25 titles currently in development. Half are new thought, IP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, um, and even like, what what is London Studio doing, right? Like they they, they I think they've either talked about their game or there there have been reports about their game and reports, I believe. Yeah, there's there are so many questions, and if that's PSVR, maybe that then gets pushed to whenever PSVR is ready. But there's there's so much. What is the astro? What is um uh uh Asobi. Team Asobo? Team Asobi. Is it a C- Asobi or Asobo? Asobi. Both exist. Team uh, Asobi. Team Asobi. Um, there is an Asobo that fucks me up every single time when I try to think of the name. But like, what is the next Astrobot game? Are they also working on something VR? Like, so many questions in terms of what uh, are they going to announce and what they can announce this year that I think is going to be big for them. Janet, what do you think is a big victory for the PlayStation this time around? I think the big victory is just going to be if they can get their two headliners out the door and they're gonna, yeah. assuming they'll be critically acclaimed. Because at the end of the day, like, it, it's still all about the games. And I think, like, hype and having things on the horizon is definitely, like needed to feel like the company's doing well like even if those things can't be del- even like the psv vr2 announcement right we don't know what's really gonna happen with that but the fact that that got mentioned and obviously it's a very like niche market that they just kind of decided that we're gonna do it anyway we're just gonna do it for the culture because we like believe in it and we want to do it but that's still it's like okay it gives me something to look forward to like people need that or else it'll be like well i mean they had this but what what's coming up like you know people start to get worried if they don't see like how there can be success in the future so i do think that is always needed but I wouldn't necessarily call those victories ever ever because it's more like it's a victory you could have later like that's not really like you know it's kind of like it's not a victory if I announce I'm like and obviously this is way it is way more likely that when you announce a game you're doing it versus when I like talk about my goals whether or not I'm doing that because it's I don't have like financial stakeholders or something um well I guess kind of with Patreon but right like if I say like I'm doing something oh it sounds great but like did you actually do it and how did it go like you need the results um, so while like definitely a, a Bloodborne or a Bluepoint remake or anything like that would be very exciting. And I think I'd be a little surprised if we didn't see some type of remake or remaster or something come out. I don't think that's enough for that to be, if that's the best thing you had in that year, that means that the year wasn't that good. If like you talking about something you're going to do is the highest point. Yeah. I think that their big victory would be, 
a long tail. And what I mean is like kind of what we're talking about already, but you, we already know, obviously, Spider-Man 2 next year. We already know Wolverine down the line. I think if they can sit there and rather than have this nebulous, we have 25 n- new titles coming, half of which are IPs, they're able to be like, cool, here's what the next year of PlayStation or two years looks like. I think that would go far. Because remember when they did that at E3 when it was cool, and I'm talking many E3s ago, right? When it was Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima, uh what was it? there was another one that always got trucked out at the same time with them doesn't matter but remember for a while there it was like multiple e3s where we saw the same games from playstation death yes that's stranding and it was that thing of like oh this isn't as hype as i want it to be but oh fuck like they have the games they have so much going on right and that's obviously easy to believe in i think if they are able to get god of war and horizon out this year and they are both 90s as we're saying that's a pretty big fucking victory and, uh, you know, boost to exactly what I'm talking about in terms of their lineup and what's coming to be like, we have two game of the year contenders, right? Like it sucks that these games are up against each other because only one can win kind of thing. Like that'd be huge. That'd be great to build, build off of it because it is all about the game. So if they're able to say, here's what's coming down the pipe, I think that goes really far for them. Yeah, I have one that I, I it's not a prediction, but it's a hope for a sure. big victory. And maybe this feeds into the next uh, uh, category we got here. But like, project spartacus you know that's been rumored oh, to be <laughs> the, com- the competitor to xbox game pass and you know me and janet did the whole episode about it that everybody should go check out right now on youtube.com it's kind of funny games uh you know if they're able to come out with that and it's able to hit and actually be good and actually feel like a oh this is a bank for my buck i'm getting so many games with this oh man i can get i can go back and play the ps1 ps2 and ps3 games that i loved if it's able to fulfill all of that i think that could be a, it has the potential to to be a huge victory granted like with some of what we talked about with what it's reported to be and the tier structure and you know what we assume just based on like Gaikai and like what PlayStation Now is currently and how that's probably going to roll into what Project Spartacus is it's hard to like get my hopes all the way up and think that oh yeah this is going to be the big victory of the year that is going to compete with a game pass that is going to be that thing but I hope man like I uh, that is it's, it's a hope not a prediction necessarily Oh, we have a whole bunch of Project Spartacus predictions to get into if you want to. But before then, let me remind you of Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Of course, if you are on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you could be watching us record this show live right now, just like Slacks, Indy Ronin, Orin all are. Of course, you could write in to be part of the show, like so many of the names we have. I just talked about JC's question, Daniel's question. We got a Hayden Allison coming up, James Martin coming up. And of course, you could get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, Greg Way, let's have a word from our sponsor. What would it feel like if we were finally free of high interest loans or credit card debt? Well, Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether you're looking to pay off credit cards, consolidate high interest debt, or fund some personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking only at your credit score, Upstart considers other factors like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate. One of my really good friends did exactly this, and it helped him out so much, just consolidating all of his debt into one place, allowed him to focus and just take care of it. And now he's debt free. Thanks to Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today. And when you go to upstart.com slash kind of funny, that's upstart.com slash kind of funny. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash kind of funny. There's so much going on right now, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like traveling, or stuff you'd rather avoid, like traffic. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can control the vibes in your own head when you've got a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Uh, With Raycon's new everyday earbuds, they look, feel, and sound better than ever. Uh, One of my best friends, James Burke, he loves these things. He's always out there when he's running, when he's playing his baseball. He's a baseball coach, so he does a lot of those two things. And Raycon's new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound sound better than ever. They've got an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for a perfect in-ear fit. Plus, you get three new sound profiles, so the sound is great no matter what you're listening to, whether it's a podcast like this one, or some hip-hop, or some rock, or anything in between. Right now, Kind of Funny listeners, you can get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash kindoffunny. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash kindoffunny to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash kind of funny using the internet without express vpn is like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the gas station you're probably fine but 
it could be a disaster. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, you're basically giving someone else the keys to your personal data, like your passwords, your financial details, the passwords to your financial life. And it doesn't even take much technical knowledge for someone to hack you. But ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your data and the world that it'd take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past. Plus, it's super easy to use. You just open the app and press a single button. I've been using it kind of funny he's been using it it's keeping our internet safe and I love that. I love it so much. I love how easy it is to use. And I love that I just don't even need to worry about it. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash kind of funny. And you can get an extra three months for free by going to expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. Okay. So you brought it up. Spartacus. Let's jump. Well, I a lot of people bring up in the defeat column Spartacus. So we'll get there <laughs> for what the biggest defeat is. But instead, let's start with when is Spartacus dropping? And I guess actually, Janet, what is PlayStation Spartacus if people don't know? Um, it is rumored still, so we don't know if it exists yet. Mm -hmm. I believe Bloomberg was the one that broke that out. Um, and it is supposed to be a revamp to PS Plus. So it is an additional tiered system on top of the existing PlayStation Plus. So in Spartacus, it would be first tier is just PS Plus benefits that you already have currently if you have the service. The second tier would offer a large catalog of PS4 and eventually PS5 games. And then the third tier is essentially PS Now maybe revamped we don't really know what changes might be coming to that and it would be you know the assumedly the price point would increase per tier kind of how mm -hmm. there's game pass and game pass ultimate um but yeah that's spartacus excellent not day and date what oh yeah, like not the, releases, day and date. yeah the releases exactly. would not be day and date according yeah. to the rumors like there's not a plan for like and this is launching like we're now putting mm -hmm. all our first party games on that so in that sense it's not a one-to-one -to, -one to game pass even in the theory but that is what they are looking to launch as a, a way to be competitive in the market and the other rumor, and I'm probably because I think you are right that it was Bloomberg. Yep, Bloomberg. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, no, it was. It was. You're right. Jason Trier always out there doing his business. Um, the rumor was launching in spring 2022. So mm -hmm. honestly, it could happen tomorrow morning and this episode's out of date. <laughs> uh, but I will go to busting. When do you think you see Spartacus? <sighs> Fiscal year ends in March. Yeah, April 1st is the next quarter. April 1st. I'm going to say... Yeah. I'm going to say April, sometime in April, you, you hear about it. And it okay. is like a, you know what? No, I'm going to take it back. I think you hear about it end of March and they roll it out April. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, think it's like a, it's coming next week kind of thing. It's a tough one because how do you do it? When do you do it? Blah, blah, blah. And we're in such a different time. However, I have been doing this for 15 years this year. So I'm very fucking old. And I know PlayStation tends to be old with some of their stuff as well. Game Developers Conference is March 21st through the 25th. PlayStation, GDC used to be a big place for PlayStation where they came and talked about VR. It's, I, they used, I think they, they, I don't think, I remember I was in the audience. They debuted Move there or whatever. Like they use GDC as a launch platform. I could see them doing it there, kind of. I think it's a weird one because it really doesn't, it's not tech. Well, it's tech, but it's not like, physical tech where you need to get it into the hands of the game developers so like it would make sense to do something there for game developers to play it but it might be a nice pr beat to do there it would be i think you want to do this i would imagine especially since it's not day and date how do you balance horizon around that i guess you would want to go after horizon right so you don't get in the way of horizon messaging but then in the same breath you don't want people looking at it expecting horizon to be a part of it if horizon's already come you've already paid maybe the blow is lessened that okay you're you this new thing's coming but you don't do it Maybe I'm completely wrong and they don't see him in the same thing of getting in the way at all. Like, There's also Gran Turismo 7, uh, March 4th, if they're trying to like stay out, stay out, of, out of the way of their first party release. So yeah, st still, you're getting on the other side of that if you go to March. I'm going to say they do it around GDC, so the March 20s there. That's where I'm going to go. Janet, do you have a prediction? I was pretty similar. Like Even before you mentioned that the Bloomberg article mentioned spring, I just felt like spring was a good time in the sense that it's not right now, but it's not like crazy far off. And that's kind of the vibe I get from it. Um, if not, like the latest I could see that I would guess at least would be summer, like kind of in that E3 window, like during a big like showcase or something. Sure. But even for that, I feel like that doesn't quite make sense because we always I feel like whenever showcases, um, whether they're like 
big ones like the PlayStation Showcase or even just the State of Play, we're often predicting like things like, oh, what if they revamped or, or added games to the PS Plus catalog? Or what if they did this thing or whatever? Or what if they had like themes? And they pretty much never do that kind of stuff or like the hardware stuff. Like, oh, maybe they'll have a new color. That's just going to be a PlayStation blog post. So I can exactly. also see them just posting something on the PlayStation blog, honestly, and being like, this is it. This is the service. And then just kind of like, maybe throwing in little ads during their showcases and stuff like that moving forward and not making it this big deal presentation. Um, and then I'm wondering on the other side of things, does anyone offhand know how Xbox announced Game Pass? Because I feel like that, and I'm not gonna say they're gonna do the same thing, but I'm curious as to like, historically, how have companies rolled out these kind of services to their audience? Pretty sure Game Pass was an E3 announcement. Yeah, I, I think I remember it being E3. But I'm not I, I, I feel like that was like the first one as well with like Phil coming out and it felt like a moment instead of like Uncle Phil like kind of being there front and center for Xbox again. I could, Yeah, we could be wrong, but I, I feel like that was like an E3 thing because they delivered that and then PlayStation didn't have an answer for that. And that was like that year being like the play, what PlayStation showed for E3 that year was cool, but it wasn't this cool Game Pass idea that Xbox was touting. Yeah, what did Nintendo do for Nintendo Online? Obviously, it's I'm not looking for this. They shit something out on a, on a random Friday. They're like, <laughs> yeah, that was like, did they, they just say like we're doing that? You know, I'm just I'm just looking at other people in the space. I'm not saying that they were successful or not, but I'm curious as to like just the messaging. Knowing PlayStation, um, and, and the tier that... I find it tough to think that PlayStation would do it during a presentation unless it's a won't. presentation geared specific, specifically toward that. It would have to be like a hey, It'll be... tune in later this week for us to talk about our new service and it would be like some kind of stream it'll, it'll, it'll like, straight up be a blog post for sure it'll yeah. be a blog post and then like a trailer or whatever that drops on the playstation thing but it won't be a presentation because they know for the people that this would matter to you know, they know that us and ign and like the, the we, we do the heavy lifting in terms of like talking about it explaining it over and over again the audience understanding the audience disseminating information yada yada all the way through like it's that thing of like I don't even yeah I, I I always go to somebody who just owns a PlayStation and doesn't care about the shit like that we do doesn't care about the shit the way we care about it. I always go to Poe right my best friend back home who's you know a professor and it's like does Poe have PlayStation Plus does Poe really know what PlayStation Plus does he probably I mean like I think for most people it goes they buy a game there's some they want to play online with a friend they click the button and then it goes you need PlayStation Plus and I'm like what the fuck and they read right, whatever buy it and they go on like I don't think he's downloading his free games i don't think he's paying that close attention to what's going on waste of so this would just say. be a new button to hit sorry what waste of money some would say to not uh you know get on those free games for playstation plus but yeah i don't want to name names or anything this is crazy that you know you hear you about people all the time what's funny is like when you sent in the slack like here are the ps plus games and i was gonna say i can't wait to not download these <laughs> <laughs> well no um, it's not yeah. just not download you won't even redeem them which are two very I think, different things I think also, on ps plus um, <laughs> I think also like the PS Plus collection. Um, I'm pretty sure I did a quick Google. I believe that was also announced via just the blog. Yeah, like, but I'm pretty well, sure that was when it first dropped. That was that was did... during the presentation, like the PS5 presentation during the fall. Oh, that wasn't there. Yeah, that's how they they closed it. I think that was partly because you know it's the PS5 and they're they're talking about right. like you know trying to boost up that console and and uh, uh, leading up to the launch. Uh, but the other thing, oh, I forget what the other, oh the other thing I wanted to mention too was like you know, Game Pass and streaming or uh, subscription services in general, I feel like they tend, for the most part, to start off fairly weak and fairly, like, chill in terms of content, and then it takes a while for things to build up. Like, Game Pass, I don't think, was, like, the hotness until the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and with each year, it gets hotter and hotter, but it didn't start off necessarily, like, But hot. it's that thing, I hear you and I agree with that, but that, that was when they started this and people didn't know what they're doing. Now you're trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Xbox Game Pass, right? Which, in, I know there's so many arguments of, is it really that much better? Uh, at least in the war of popular opinion, right? Like, this isn't the same thing. Especially if you're, re the rumor is, right, it's revamping PlayStation Now and combining with PlayStation Plus. Like, I feel like you have to have guns blazing. You have to come out and be like, oh yeah, not obviously say our first party shit isn't day and date on there, but here are other third-party stuff we've made the deals for. Here's what we've gone through and yeah. done, blah, blah. Because it's an uphill battle. People know what Game Pass is if you care, and they care. So I like, think the, how do you do that? The, the thing I'm also trying to imagine is, like, for me, if I'm a person that doesn't listen to PS Love You or read IGN, or if I'm just a person that owns PS5 or PS4 that plays 
you know GTA Online or like what my plays the few PlayStation games every single year that I love to to get into. How does PlayStation get the message to me? And I imagine for how PlayStation operates, it is one day I turn on my PS4 or PS5 and I see the notification of like you know hey like PS Plus has added new tiers and like I go to it and I'm like oh shit I can pay more money for this thing or not and I go about my day. I feel like that is the way that most people get the information and then you do have the blog post and you have a trailer trailer that goes up with with it. But I don't necessarily see. I don't I don't see it being like a all right, like all hands on deck. It is time to like bust out the warships and like go to war <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. Here is here is the redefinition of what the PlayStation platform is. I think that is I, I, I think it is a slow burn in terms of like, all right, here's the trailer, here's the launch, and then over the year, hopefully we get more exciting shit coming to to uh Project Spartacus that actually gets us hyped for it as the years go. This is the big struggle, and this is why people wrote in for it. I said, I asked you guys, and then also the audience, what's going to be the biggest defeat for PlayStation? James Martin says Spartacus. Owning both, I feel Xbox will still look way ahead of this. Uh, three tiers feels too many when PlayStation work purely in the console space and without first-party day ones, alongside the fact that Xbox has a stellar first-party year, and they're doing it. Seems a huge uphill battle. Could even see this uh, being pushed to 2023. Lucid Dream wrote in and said Spartacus as well. Sony will attempt to compete with Game Pass by introducing a refreshed online service, which combines Plus with Now, but will still refrain from offering first-party games day one because they know they don't have to in order to maintain maximum returns on day one sales. The lack of day one titles will undercut the service in a big enough way uh, to not move the needle in either direction. This will ultimately be a defeat, but will by no means disrupt their business in any meaningful way financially. PlayStation Plus already seems to be very successful offering as it is now, and this change won't cost them any current subscribers. Go ahead, please. I want to I want to give a, a prediction, you know, regarding the day one stuff, because we talked about this a little bit during our um, discussion when the Project Spartacus stuff was first reported about like what do they do, how do they make it on par, how do they make it something something exciting, and I don't think they give the like. I don't think they they make it a bullet point that they that they have they're gonna have like day one stuff on there because I, they're not gonna have I don't think PlayStation Studios first party uh, stuff on there, but I do think for them if they're thinking about this the right way at all there has to be some sort of like even if it's not playstation first party games some games have to be on their day and date day one and i think it might be the transition of in the way in the way that uh like i look at xbox on khd i'll look at xbox game with games with gold games and i'm like oh man these have like fallen off in quality as like the game pass games have like risen in quality ps plus the last year especially but even like going going before that but the last year especially has had bangers uh day and date right especially even when we talk about this month getting deep rock galactic which which is going to be day and date on playstation uh at its at its launch also on ps plus as well as things like persona 5 strikers and like looking back at the year getting maquette day and date getting uh hunters arena legends getting um uh, uh i know there's a lot more games i can't think of them operation tango and other mm-hmm. games day and day um destruction all stars <laughs> odd world uh maquette right like getting all these games day and date on ps plus uh i think I could see in the way that I have that they have a tier where that tier one kind of falls back into like, all right, let's give them like not as many day and date things here. So that way on Project Spartacus uh, or on the tier two of Project Spartacus, we can go, oh, here's like these fucking like here, here are games that are day and date coming here that makes us feel more beefed up in a way where it feels like you're not losing anything on tier one. Yeah. And on tier two, it does feel like they're trying to at least push for something. And there was the idea given by somebody who wrote in who they were like, hey, what if it is? the you don't see the horizons and the god of wars and stuff on that on that um day and date on that service but you do see the partnerships that they do with like jade raymond and deviation and like Mm -hmm. that tier of playstation first party games that they are putting on playstation studios that aren't the first party studios putting out maybe those then appear day and date because that could maybe cut the difference that way i think if they're thinking about the right way they got to do something like that uh to beef it up and if they don't i feel like it's it's weird to just, just have those tiers of Project Spartacus sitting kind of stagnant, being these games that by the time we get get them on, on that service, they're old. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point of calling out like the Jade Raymond kind of stuff and what they've already done there. And that's what you'd hope for. That's what you'd hope they'd be doing. But we will wait and see. I mean, I think, too, there's value in having I do think in a dream world, in a sense, just from like a consumer standpoint, if you had like day and date first party. Obviously, that's financially advantageous. So, like, 
I don't think any consumer would necessarily be against having that. Um, we know they're not going to do that. At least they have no plans of doing that. But that being said, I think they can still, I would like to see that tier two be like, have the power of the PS Plus collection, but in addition, because obviously it's a different thing. Um, I want to see, like, I, I do at least want to see some first party stuff that isn't super old, or at least like, even if it is old, it's like, it is representative of the catalog of what makes PlayStation PlayStation and what makes PlayStation great. Because even though, sure, day and date is better, quote unquote, but not every gamer is out there buying games at launch like that. I'll, most probably aren't. Like most are like, oh yeah, like I think I'll, oh yeah, like Kojima put out a game. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, I did like Metal Gear. Like it, people are a lot more casual. People wait for sales and things. And mm -hmm. this could be a way for people to wait on stuff that they're maybe not sure about. And like, like, you know, next year comes around. Like I'd like to see at least within like maybe six months would be ideal, but a year would be like probably more realistic of seeing stuff like, Horizon, um, God, oh my God, like not Forbidden West, the Zero freaking, no, the, well, Forbidden West, Forza I guess, the one coming out. Yeah. Oh, for, for, Forbidden West, West. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I mix up Forbidden West with Frozen Wilds because the same, like, anyway, the names have issues. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Just but, wait until the third one. Oh my God. It'll be an issue. No, it's going to be, <laughs> but like that coming out next year would be cool. Like what I'd like to see from this catalog, like at launch would be, what are some of the bangers that have come out either exclusive to PlayStation or that I could now build an association or strengthen an association with PlayStation that I may have missed? Things like Spider-Man and, and or Miles, things like Death Stranding, because that's not in the PS Plus collection yet. Things like, you know, if this comes out after the second Horizon comes out, what if the first one's on there? That's not on the collection. Like, and it can kind of incentivize people to, oh, I never played through it. Let me play through it. I like this. Let me buy the second one. And that's how I could see it working and being exciting along with some like third party stuff. Like I think this does have to have like the games have to have cachet. And I think you don't necessarily need big day and date as long as you're regularly updating with cool stuff that people want to play that kind of highlights what's going on and what's available on the console. Yeah, that's a good way to put it for sure. Uh, off of the Spartacus train, uh, other big defeats that I thought were interesting. Hayden Allison wrote in and said, Bethesda releasing Starfield only on Xbox feels like the first Oh, he's gone. He mentioned That's Xbox. That's what happens when you mention Xbox on a PlayStation podcast. You get kicked, Greg. Oh, so now, hold on a second, because I asked Kevin about this this morning. We were setting up. Does this happen to anybody else? Because it happened to oh, Mike. all the time. Okay, yeah. Cool. It, 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 Discord's it, been not fun for the last couple of months, Greg. That's my thing where I was like, I, I when I left, Discord was fine. And then when I did episode 100, I remember I disconnected like twice or three times, yep. maybe. And then yesterday during the meeting, I was like, is it fucking me or is it the world? Okay, it's the world. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's the world. Yeah. Fuckers. Uh, Hayden Allison wrote in for biggest defeat for PlayStation. Said Bethesda releasing Starfield only on Xbox feels like the first big loss for PlayStation's catalog. I thought that was an interesting one. So many of these have been, you know, delaying God of War or PlayStation VR, and then to bring in the Xbox thing and Starfield and what that actually does. It, it was interesting, you know, glancing through uh, the list. You can go to twittercom uh, blessing junior and get blessings uh, super fun game release calendar 2022. Uh, getting there and seeing Starfield on here, you'd be like, all right, I can't wait. All right, it's not on PlayStation. Like I'm gonna yeah. play it on Xbox, obviously, but I was like, oh shit, right? That's not a. It's it, it, it's been such a nebulous idea, as you know, Psychonauts 2 Xbox Studio, but it's too too late, so it is on PlayStation that that's actually happening. Yeah, that we'll I'm, actually I'm, see that. For me, like for as, as much as I love Bethesda games, right? Like that feel that does feel like a, a blow somewhat, right? And it's a blow that's easy to get over for me because like you know these games are on Xbox and they're also on PC and Xbox Game Pass. All these games are coming there, and that's such a a a, a, de a good price for that service. That like you know I'm gonna play the games on xbox or pc but it is that thing of like yeah this is gonna be my first big bethesda game that i'm not playing on my playstation right like i played fallout 3 and that, and that was like my first big bethesda game i played that on my ps3 right i played skyrim busted on my ps3 uh, <laughs> and i played fallout 4 on my ps3 but like yeah i'm gonna have to switch starting with starfield and that's not even like and, not, and i guess that's not even the first one when you count in something like redfall which i know is a little bit lower key compared to starfield but sure. is also a big uh release from arcane uh under bethesda that we probably would have gotten a uh, cross-platform if uh that 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 um acquisition didn't take place and so this year is the year you know talk about that de that defeat this year is the year where that's starting to reflect in a big way do you guys have any other b way big defeats you see Oh, man. Probably just the delays like i think yeah. even though god of war being delayed if you still have a horizon you still did have like that one heavy hitter but i think that would be definitely an l or like a you know a dark cloud in the sky for playstation because oh, it's... i would love if dark cloud came out the sky on playstation <laughs> <laughs> that would also be an l 
No, How I don't dare know. You. I haven't played Dark Cloud because you told me not to. I was going to play it, but you said it wasn't good on PS Now, which maybe they'll fix with Spartacus. I don't know. Did I say um, that? Yeah. Oh, was that a lie from the past you? Because that's what you told me. I was going to play it, and you're did like, it doesn't was... perform well. I, do, I, I don't remember saying that. Wait, what did game? I say you that? Did. Dark Cloud. Yeah. Um, I, I maybe think... not on content, so like it's you know my work. But why would I make that up just to? But that's not something you? that yeah. you stream. Dark Cloud is something you download too. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what I was saying. Maybe I was saying download it, don't stream it. But like you can download it on PS Now. Why would I say that? Yeah. I don't know. I forget why I say that. Should I, I do that? Back. You know what? You know what it was. I I probably said I probably said that you might not appreciate it as much now going back to it because it's an okay. old game. Um, but yeah, play it. Why not? It's a good game. Also, Matthew well, in the chat I have to wait for uh, says to come something. Because I canceled PS now. Matthew in the chat also <laughs> says, you know, blessing says a lot of things, and that's very true. That's very yeah, true. That's I do not, say a lot of things. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> the one I want to end with because I know we have other stuff. We have updates. We have things you've been playing. All these different stuff. Uh, I want to talk about Last of Us Factions. Why? I want to know. We if don't need to do this. Predictions. We Will we this. see it? Will we see it this year? Will it release this year? No, we won't see it. It won't release. Um, honestly, the what sucks about Last of Us Factions, and it's so funny that you're mentioning this because, like, obviously this is an order that only applies to me, but I mentioned at the at the top of the show that I listened to a bunch of games cast, and y'all had an episode um, talking about factions, like in Nick relation Sancho to was on it. Halo, yeah, and, yeah, one of my, and all one of my that favorite stuff. episodes of the year. I love talking about um, factions. And in that, like, y'all were like, oh, well, we see factions at Game Awards. And, you know, Sandra, I think Sandra said yes. Because um, if you say yes enough, one day you'll be right. Oh, yeah. But I don't care enough about that small probability. Because I feel like if I take the L here, I'm like, oh, actually, it's out. Like, your prediction was wrong. I'm like, yeah, but, like, do you, was it a bad prediction? It wasn't. There's nothing that signifies, other than hope and the knowledge that they are working on it, because they said we're working on it. And every now and then they're like, can anyone do animations? Because we need someone to do that. <laughs> anybody, anybody out there know how to make a video game? Because like, yeah. we're oh, looking what, for the We are okay. And obviously, <laughs> this is not me trying to shade like their process and hiring it all and stuff. It's, you know, I'm not there. But one funny thing was like when they were talking about it like last year and they're like, just so you know, we know that you like want the game and we just want to say we are indeed working on it. And also, if you have any skills, please click the link to get hired. I'm like, this is not still confidence. This is not the time for you to like hyperlink this job board. I mean, it kind of is, right? Because you want people applying. But yeah, I was just like, this does not instill around the corner. I'm not getting around the corner vibes from this in any way. Blessing, you put your head in your hands as soon as this question was asked. This is you're the you're the biggest factions fans outside of Sancho. <laughs> I don't know, man. I want it. I'm gonna say yeah. I think we. I don't think it releases this year. I th I think we could see it because like they've been talking about this game since what twenty when did I when did I come down here for um uh which call it uh, up and comers I think it was twenty nineteen yeah. yeah you were twenty nineteen yeah yeah that's like, on Spartacus and that's what they launch with that's what they launch with the killer app yeah that'd be pretty good actually that'd be, that messed with the day and day thing though anyway go ahead I cut you off um because it was that week that they talked about um yeah there's not gonna be multiplayer <laughs> in the last of us part two uh where they put out the note because everybody was asking about it they, because they did that like the preview and the review of the state of play uh so it's been since 2019 we're in 2022 now we've known it, it's existed <laughs> <laughs> Look at the years. wheels turning the wheels turning on this guy <laughs> how long can they drag this out before they're like no it's not ex it doesn't i've never exist seen anymore. someone cope this hard i've never seen someone <laughs> cope this hard. i have to believe that they're working on it i have to believe that it exists i i think they're i think they talk about it this year because it's been long enough they have to say something about it they have to show like an idea <laughs> or like what is the game is it a battle royale is it the what factions was on the original last of us is it so is it like an ongoing game is it like an apex what is it I, I they have to answer these questions because it's driving me personally insane i know like the large last of us audience probably is like we don't give a fuck like we got last of us too tell us about it when you tell us about it me and sancho are going crazy and so i'm gonna say they gotta talk about it this year <laughs> just to say shame me and Sancho because I, like I, I can't think, take it anymore. I think they have to talk about it when that game is ready to come out within months I think that would be a big mistake for them to especially because you know I I know you and Sancho are, have been frothing at the mouth for for years for this but you have to think about like some of the uh, like other fans and stuff who have like the expectations of like when this is coming and the second they get any hint of 
any official factions talk, they're going to be like, all right, it's coming out like as soon as possible, right? And if they're going to talk about it this year, they're going to talk about it in the sense of like, here's the ideas that we have for it, and it'll be ready when it's ready, and it probably won't be ready for another at least year or two, right? Like, oh, I, I, don't I say two. Dude, don't say two. <laughs> dude they were yeah, hiring a launch. majority of, like, uh, roles for that project last People year. People hire all like, throughout the development process. That's, it happens. That's fair, but, like, I, 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 I imagine I think, we don't hear about that game until it's, like, three months out from coming out. I, I think they reveal it at PlayStation presentation this fall, and it gets a 2023 window and nothing else. It's my final prediction. I think I think I think we see factions this year and talk about it, but yeah, I don't think it releases this year. But if they also showed up one day and was like, you know what, we're not doing it, I would also be like, I expect that 100. percent I'd be so mad. I quit. I can't do anything. Why would you quit us? What did we do? <laughs> well, I, I, can't, I can't continue talking about PlayStation when they've stabbed me in the back in this way. Wow, Jesus. Right. What's I'll with start like all of the? Y'all need to just let it go. The Vita, the factions. Just oh, I've like, let the Vita go. That's all the Vita. We've all let the Vita go. We, Janet, all all the right? Vita go. I'm, I'm playing Persona 4 Golden on a true uh, handheld, the Steam Deck later this year. Um, you know. Also, like chat's hilarious. Live chat's hilarious with like this faction stuff. Some Someone said, uh, Slack said they should call it Fictions, Last of Us Fictions at this point. Um, someone else said, La- Joshi G, Last of Us Factions 2025. You know, it doesn't nope. sound too off, honestly. I don't, like, I don't like the way you guys string certain words together. You know, things remember, like was, Last of Us Factions 2025. How dare you? Plus, remember, I was, I think, uh, late, la- well, not late last year, I guess late September or whatever, when we were doing this, I was, I made a whole pitch. For 2022, remember being like the year of the last of, of Last of Us, where they put out that you know PS5 version of the one, the redone one. Uh, yeah. They put the show drops. They that. do something with factions. Like hey, it could still happen. Yeah, I think the thing that concerns me also is like, did you put, they, did did factions end up on the list here? Is it on no? But because I only put games with officially uh, slates, like official <laughs> slates, official dates and things. Um, the thing that worries me is like, is Naughty Dog working on the Last of Us remake too? And like. What is their next big game that they're working on? You know, like, uh, what's up with that Uncharted remake? <laughs> like, what is or not Uncharted remake, but like the next Uncharted game I mean, that I mean, like I mean. was being worked on? Like, there's so much. Not there's the Last Wish TV show, which Neil Druckmann is also working on. There's so much shit, like un, uh, uh, Naughty Dog shit in the works, and I don't necessarily see factions taking precedent over anything else. <laughs> like, it is the, it is their next game. It is the Last Was show. It is the remake. It is the next Uncharted. And then, like, at the very bottom of the totem pole is Last Was factions. I think it's in the works. I think people are actively, you know, doing... St- I think it's I think it's somebody on somebody's, like, screen in the computer in the office. I think they have it, like, <laughs> on a monitor. <laughs> and they're doing something with it. But I don't know if it's, like, actively, like, you know... If it's on the forefront of people's minds there of like we gotta get this out. I think it's a thing that's always ongoing being being worked on at this point. And like I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong and I hope somebody's working on it. But like, man, I it's just so hard for me to believe with how much Night Dog shit there is in the works. Those ladies and gentlemen. Our our PlayStation 2022 predictions. <laughs> uh, thank you all for writing in with yours. Uh it's been fantastic. Blessing. Why don't you give me some PlayStation updates? Yeah, we don't have uh, too much for updates. We just have uh, the PS Now and PS Plus games for January. So starting with PS Now, uh, we're getting some Mortal Kombat 11, Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age, Fury Unleashed, Unturned, uh, Super Time Force Ultra, and then Kerbal Space Program Enhanced Edition. And so, hey, look out for a banger month of January on PS Game Now. Game Pass killer. Let's go. <laughs> Project Spartacus <laughs> on the way. Uh, we also got PS Plus games for January. And if you're listening to this on Tuesday, that means these games are available right now. Or if you're listening to it later on the week, uh, go ahead and get these games added to your library unless you're janet you're getting persona 5 strikers uh deep rock galactic and dirt 5 which is actually a really banger month for um ps plus especially talking about deep rock galactic because that is a game that is coming out on day and date and that is also the playstation pick for the week of course uh playstation picks is where we highlight a few of the cool looking games coming to psn we have no big hitters uh but deep rock galactic is the one pick for you that's coming to ps5 and ps4 again on tuesday january 4th on ps plus uh deep rock galactic is a one to four player co-op fps featuring badass space dwarves 100 uh, percent destructible environments procedurally generated caves and endless hordes of alien monsters you can work together as a team to dig explore and fight your way through a massive cave system filled with hordes of deadly enemies and valuable resources uh i went, a- went ahead and like 
looked up a few things about the game because uh, this is a game that I see on my Twitter or I've seen on my Twitter um, quite often via Emmett Watkins Jr., who is a friend of the show who <laughs> listens all the time. Uh, Emmett Watkins Jr., I love him because he he evangelizes the same games because he is a very passionate person when it comes to the games he loves. He loves Titanfall 2. Uh, he loves risk of rain too and he also loves deep rock galactic and so because of his recommendation i went ahead and looked into like what the metacritic score is and all these things for the game it's on high metacritic, right yeah it's high it's sitting at an 85 on metacritic and i went ahead and looked up the ign review it was reviewed uh, by tj hafer at ign and given a 9 out of 10 when it came out on pc in 2021 uh and his review reads or their review reads uh, deep rock galactic is the best kind of four-player co-op game the combat is fast and exciting with tons of interesting synergies to find between the four distinct playable classes. The objectives on the various missions are wide ranging enough to keep things interesting, but straightforward enough that a new player could drop in and get the hang of it pretty quickly. You can absolutely have a blast and find success with a level one unupgraded dwarf, uh, but there's tons of rooms to develop your skills and customize your look if you're willing to put in the time. Raise a tankard. Uh, this one's a winner, which I think you know, looking at that Metacritic, I'm like, dude, I might have to check this thing out because it seems pretty cool. Well, that's the thing, right, is, you know, yesterday in the uh, meeting we were doing, planning the week, uh, I'm streaming with Mike on Wednesday, and I was like, I want to pl play Back for Blood. And everybody's like, why, are we sponsored? Why do you want to play? And I'm like, I, Back for Blood came out when I was on, I haven't played it. I was so excited for it. And you're like, what about Deep Rock Galactic? I was like, what the fuck is that? And so, I went and read the review and looked at the thing and like, I'm going to try it tomorrow and see if it clicks. Oh, hell yeah. Like, I love a good co-op shooter. And you said you'd come play on stream if it, if, if, uh, if I end up doing it, like, I don't know. It looks interesting. I, I don't, I don't know the hook. If it's just, if the, like, that sounds goofy because you play games for gameplay, obviously, but looking at it, I'm like, I don't know if the gameplay will be my kind of thing, but it kind of could be like as much as I love co-op borderlands and like hell divers and stuff like that. Hopefully I'd like this. Yeah. That's the thing is I'm right there with you though. Like, I don't, uh, I don't know what the exact hook is aside from like, you know, four player co-op, go through complete objectives, probably collect a lot of resources and upgrade your character. But like, you know, that sounds like it could be fun. It, with the reviews that it's getting, that makes me think that the actual process of like doing that shit is probably really fun. And if it is, I want to check that out because, you know, that seems like my kind of game. For sure. For sure. Janet, are you going to try it? Probably not. Unless you all are like, honestly, this hits and I think you'd like it. Then even then, I, I'd still probably not, but I'd, I'd consider it more. <laughs> Um, I don't think I'm uh, itching to <laughs> add this to my library. <laughs> it's available tomorrow. I'll, I will. Oh, she's gone. Oh, that was it. She's, she's, she, she's not going to do shit. Yeah, no, she's a coward. <laughs> she couldn't finish the sentence, had to leave. She, no. she knew what she was getting into. Yes, oh, she's so. back. I'm being punished for my PlayStation sins, I guess. <laughs> um, I'll, Discord. I'll, down, I'll install, I'll put all of them on the library. I don't even know the terminology because I never, I almost never do Add it. Add the library. I'll button. add this to library. Actually, I'm not gonna add all these. I'll probably add like Persona 5 Strikers and maybe something else. That's it. Fine. Okay. And then I won't play Persona 5 Strikers, but I'll have it. So there's that. Well, yeah, you want to play Persona 5 first, Janet. Definitely do that first and then, then I'm play have that. I just haven't played it yet. I was heard Dirt 5 is pretty good for what it's worth. If anybody wants to play Dirt 5 here. I don't okay, well, that's enough. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just not a, I'm not really a big car person. Like I need a certain kind of like I'm more of an arcadey racing person hmm. dirt five it, it seems like it's arcadey not like um what was the the really arcadey game that came out cruising cruising cruise and blast, blast. Or Hobbit, oh, not cruise like cruising blast, blast. so good but it I'm seems so to be excited. like dirt five i assume it seems to be like on the forza horizon side of like arcadey where it's like it's a real ass cars driving but it's not semi in the way that like a uh, Forza Motorsport or a Gran Turismo right. is going to be super simmy. It seems like this is fun off-road um, uh, shit. Which and the trailer says "Wanna Let fun. Loose," like hell yeah. <laughs> oh, <I do> <laughs> <laughs> you know, Barrett's like, you know what? I, I do want to let loose. I I love everything about what you just said, Barrett. Um, you know, I haven't mean to let loose this year, so I think um, you know that's the best pitch yo, I've heard of it. So as you as playing the, this trailer, the, the, the year of letting loose. <laughs> As as Bear's playing this trailer, I think I've had Dirt Five on my PS5, but I just never played it. I'm watching this trailer right now, and I'm like, shit, I might play some Dirt Five because this looks really fun. I, I'm, I'm alone right. in that. Go. Did Dirt Five come with the PlayStation Five, or is that did it come with the Xbox Series X? Five, came, five? It came with the Xbox Series X, okay. but you probably got a PS5 review. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, wait, shit, fuck. I, I remember I did download this at some point. Now I I'm wondering if I have if I secretly have Dirt Five. I don't think I do. Dirt Five, it's on Game Pass. I think it's I think it's on Game Pass. Yeah, if you Racing work in the industry, you probably have to five. Racing games are fascinating because it's like, 
I feel like they don't live under a rock by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just, it's like such a barrier to entry of like, are you into cars? No, all right, bye. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no like, you dip your toe in it kind of thing, I feel like. And there's so many different ones and all these things. I mean, there used to be even more, obviously. You see Forza Horizon 5 got Game of the Year IGN. I did, yeah. yeah. Which is wild. And also, uh, for the record, I never get, I don't get to say this much, but like I told you also, in the post show, all those episodes ago, I was like, Forza Horizon 5 is going to win a Game of the Year at a major outlet. IGN, baby. The most major outlet. Appreciate you guys. Damn. Tom Marks more space. Yeah, Tom wow. Marks, Ryan McCaffrey, you did the you did the Lord's work, even though I'm sure Tom Marks probably like went for Persona 5 Strikers or something. But still, I believe I, I believe in you guys. You guys didn't stand me wrong. I don't know if Tom Marks went for Persona 5 Strikers, but yeah. I haven't spoken to Tom it? Marks in a while. I don't know what he goes, what he what he went for. Uh, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been on break. Me for, you know, it's paternity for three months, but everybody else for two weeks. So I want to know, Blessing, what you've been playing over break? Oh, I've been playing a lot of games over break, but I'll only talk about some of them. Uh, I went back to Near Replicant because uh, Near Replicant came out last spring and I only played like four hours of it before like other games came out because it came out, I think, around like Outriders and like <laughs> other games. I don't know why I would stop playing Near for Outriders, but I did. Uh, and so like I put it down and I also just didn't have as much of like the craving to go back to it. And I, I, I talked about this a little bit in the episode of The Blessing Show that came out uh, last month where I did like my non Game of the Year awards. And one of the awards I did was my most anticipated game that I didn't play. And it was a three way tie between Near Replicant, uh, Final Fantasy VII Intergrade and Persona 5 Strikers. And I think doing that episode made me look back at Nier and went like, oh man, I forgot how much I love Nier. I should go back and play Nier Replicant because I now have the craving for it, especially having the space of break to play it. And I went back to it and I finished the first playthrough in about two days. Wow. Uh, I am in love with this game in a way that I wasn't even expecting. Even being such a big fan of Nier Automata, going into Nier Replicant, I had the understanding that it was an older game, right? came out originally Jesus. on the PS3. That woman just took a lancer <laughs> to the chest. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happens. That happens in the game sometimes. Uh, but like, it, it being an older game, it being a prequel to Nier Automata mm-hmm. extensively, like, it being even even starting playing it and like having those differences of you know instead of having like a droid follow you and like having that um like that action shooter gameplay it's a book it's like a magic book that is following you and like it's way more magic-y than technology based uh in near replicate and i think the leaning into the magic more made me a little bit less interested because i just like i, I like technology and science fiction and uh, all that shit in games more so than magic and like fantasy and, and, and that stuff and like near is kind of a meeting of the two in a lot of ways. Um, but by the time I, I went back to it, within my first sitting, doing a few quests into it, I was like, man, this is actually hitting in a way that I was just, I just wasn't expecting. Like, it is, you know, an action RPG, hack and slash, um, a lot of bullet hell elements. But the thing, the thing that's special about Nier, both Replicant and Auto- Automata, is that they shift perspective and, like, the kind of gameplay you're getting into a lot, even though it is all of this action game, right? It is, like... You know, you're doing the hack and slash stuff and you're doing the third person shooter stuff, but they change camera perspective a lot. So you'll go from third person action into like side scrolling action into like top down. And uh, they like flip between that stuff a lot. And so there's a lot of variation and a lot of like creativity in, in terms of how they approach it. But then also from quest to quest in terms of setting and the way they go about it, it's different. Like right now in the video, you see like the top down uh, level that they have in there. But then in terms of setting, right, you'll go from here's a magical forest. Here's a haunted mansion. Like here's a um, a town by uh, by the water, right? Like in the 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 way they kind of pace it out, and like the quick clip of the quest, and like the style of the quest, kind of all come together in such a seamless and super well paced way to where. I always kind of had that one more feeling where I do a quest 45 minutes to finish it. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I really want to do the next thing because like it all goes into the overall goal of you playing as this character who is trying to heal his sister of this infection that she has in this like post-apocalyptic world. So you're like going through and trying to collect the elements to like heal his sister essentially. Uh, And it's very engaging, very like the the story is really good and kind of like, there's a lot of despair, but there's also like a lot of like comfort in the way that it's approached, in the yeah. way that like the music is very chill, the vibes are very chill. Yeah, bless, even though I, the story I, is very fucked up. I wanted to ask you because yeah, I haven't, I, I didn't get past like a, a certain part of that game, but I did try to put a, a good amount into Replicant when it came out, and like the best way I could describe it is like it gives off very weird, but maybe you'll understand what I'm saying, like Ocarina of Time vibes. 
in a sense. Yeah. Of just like the way the music comes together, the way the setting comes together, the way like your character has a relationship to that world. Um, at, at least like I, I know that there's a, a specific like jump in that story and that's the part that I didn't quite get to, but at least those like opening hours, that was something that like I was constantly kind of comparing to of like, this reminds me of Ocarina for some reason. I mean, even structurally, there's a kind of like an open field that you go into that will like link you to the different parts of the world. And it reminded me a lot of Ocarina. Like I had the, the exact thought of like, oh yeah, this is very just lifted from Ocarina of Time in the way that you go from your town, you leave, you leave your town, and it's like a bunch of enemies that are in the open world, and then you go to another area, and then you go and do the quest in that area. Yeah, it does have like a big, uh, like I I think there are a lot of li- no pun intended, a lot of links to like something like o- o- Ocarina of Time uh, there. But yeah, I finished the first uh, playthrough. I loved it. I started up the second playthrough, even though I wanted to take a break, but I was just scraping it again uh, as I started up other games. So I went back to it and like there's a lot of reading involved so far in the um second playthrough because like even though they're like called multiple playthroughs they're different playthroughs it's a weird deal that is very near uh (laughs) but like i started it doing a lot of reading and you know it's a very beautiful story like there's a lot going on that i don't need to get into because it's very it's very spoilerish and honestly a lot of it was sawing gibberish if you're not into near but i will i will cap this by saying that like i fucking adore this game and it's like it's it's like creeped into my top 10 games of the year in a way that I just was not expecting. Um, and so, yeah, that's near. And I also played uh, Mass Effect 2. Um, mm. I'm partway through it. I'm like seven or eight hours in. Uh, it's what I picked up right after finishing the the first playthrough near. And I am loving it. You know, I, I, I played Mass Effect 1 when Legendary Edition first came out, finished it, and was like, cool, let me take a break before I jump into Mass Effect 2. And upon starting Mass Effect 2, it is immediately apparent like the jump in quality oh, yeah. <laughs> from Mass Effect oh, 1. Yeah. Uh, like people told me about it and I was expecting it, but as soon as it hits, I'm like, oh yeah, this is way better just in terms of the mechanics and how it feels to actually like do combat and stuff. It feels less of an RPG as RPG uh, like Mass Effect is, but like I think it, it it is all for the better just in terms of, you know, the combat's good. It is very, uh, the the way it guides you through feels less like, I don't know. Like, it, there, there's there's less like friction between like, okay, I, I want to hop into the next thing. Let me go on this mission, and it's straight into like the action. Uh, and you can talk to characters if you want to like explore and talk to characters. You can do that. If you want to just like hop right into the mission and do the combat shit, you can do that as well. And I think I really like that. Um, and I also like I'm also blown away by some of the missions. I don't know what the I'm not gonna spoil shit, but I will. I'll describe certain missions without like the loyalty like, missions. Yeah, like the well, not even the loyalty missions. There's one mission. Well. Actually, let me ask you, what is a loyalty mission? Is that like, because like the, the way the game sets up, right? You're recruiting characters. Is the loyalty right. mission when you recruit the character or is it like? No, a no, no. It's like, it's okay. like a w- longer in their quest chain, the more you talk to them, they reveal things about them. And then they'll usually be like, there's a mission to find my father. There's a mission to go back and gotcha. do this thing at the place I, I was figured. raised. Yeah, yeah. no, I've not gotten that far. Awesome. I've not gotten that far with any of the characters yet, but I have like been, I've just been going and recruiting all the characters. Yeah. The game basically opens up and it's like, yo, do any, do anything you want, which I love. That's what I love in games. Uh, and so like quite a few of those were dope. There was a cool reveal with one character where like they turn around. I'm like, Oh shit. Like I was expecting you. Like uh, uh, that was dope. And then there's also another mission where it is Kasumi, who is a DLC character, which I didn't realize until after I did it, where you are basically doing like a heist with her. Um, and like, I was not expecting the heist mission. It reminded me of something that was like from Hitman. Uh, like it, it, it didn't feel Mass Effect to me in a way that I really liked. Cause like, you know, the, Mass Effect when I've, I think the, the hesitance I always had jumping into it at first was just the feeling of no, not, not that Kasumi <laughs> Barry. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I was made, uh, especially cause you were talking about doing a heist. I was like, this sounds exactly like Persona 5 Royal. Hey, I mean, maybe there's some inspirations there, but yeah, no, like the, I think the thing that always made me scared to get in Mass Effect was it always seemed like this big world filled with all this lore, filled with all these things that like felt very like um, Star Trek and it is, but I also think that the way they kind of parse things out and the quest structure, the way they're like, every, the, the way that every quest kind of feels like its own contained thing and feels like its own specific way smaller story than what's happening in the wider universe, I think makes it way more appro- approachable. And for me, uh, more enjoyable and so like I've been enjoying that a lot and then I also uh, continued a little bit of Psychonauts 2 because Barrett was like hey at least hey. finish the casino mission mm. which I did and I will say and? Psychonauts 2 very good game very good game I don't know if I'm gonna continue it though <laughs> okay mm. just cause like there are a lot of games that I, I like better right now and like 
It seems dope. It just doesn't seem like it's going to blow me away. I think that's huh. where I'm at with Psychonauts 2. Where mm-hmm. the quality of everything is there. I liked the the story beats with like that first mission. I liked the level design. I think the casino casino hospital? Yeah, the casino hospital yeah. situation they got going on in the first level. Super creative. I I'm kind of with Janet that I don't love completely how the game controls, like how jump and stuff feels. I don't love. Um but I do love everything else. I think like the the world and 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 um well I'll say the art style isn't necessarily for me also. But not that's not to say that it's bad. It's it's just not like oh, I can't wait to download this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to say the art style is bad. It's not like my vibe for what I like out of it uh, out of a game's art style. I do think it's like a very creative um uh game. Just it's, like it's, it's very it's all very all early two thousands Cartoon Network. It looks a lot yeah. like the movie Ants, which I didn't realize until my brother had pointed that out because I think he was playing like alongside me the day I started it. And when I looked up like how the ants characters look, I'm like, holy cow, this is so accurate. Maybe that's, that's the thing. Because, yeah, I didn't fuck with the ants either. Which is a little. Know? It's oh, the Bugs it, Life guy. It's, yeah, like it's a certain like it's a little off putting. It's a little like um, Uncanny Valley a little bit. And I mm. think that can be dis- lightly disturbing to people. But I, I don't know. I'm Just like in the so way. Yeah, like the eyes are shaped and like people people's heads are shaped in a certain yeah, like way. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a, it's a vibe. Like that's, it, it's a know. vibe. It's like I see where you're going for. It's just not for me, but I see where you're going for. You're going for something good here, and like keep doing it. I'm just, I'm playing Great. my games over here. Yeah. But I, 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 I do respect it though. Like I got finishing that level, I was like, all right, I, I can see why a lot of people love this yeah. game. And that's um, like, and that's what the assignment that I wanted you to do. At least like get to that moment at the end of that first level where like Raz has to learn that lesson of like what it truly means to be like a, a like a psychonaut and like the level yeah. of trust of going into someone's brain into someone's essentially like emotional cognition of how they see the world um and so sounds very strange. much like an, another uh, game Exa- it, it, really it's loves. it's like it's it, it's very and that's when I when I first played psychonauts like the first one earlier this year I was like how did no one sell me on this game by just saying it's persona 5 but like the cartoon the network version of it, you know, yeah. like it's, uh, and that's, yeah. And that's why I fell in love with it. Um, I, I would say that I think there would be moments that would very much surprise you, uh, in, in ways that you wouldn't be expecting blessing, but I, I, I respect that you got there. I respect that you took the time, Janet. I don't respect, uh, the way you treated, uh, Psychonauts 2 on the Min Max, uh, 210s list, but we can, we can just move past that. We can move past it. That's fair. Um, I will say there's a part of me that still wants to do the assignment I was given just out of respect for you going back to chicory. But I'm like, man, I really don't want to like, I'm cleaning, you know, I'll get to what I'm playing, but I'm cleaning up my, my GG app with like what I'm currently playing. And I had like something crazy, like 28 games there. And I'm like, it's time to be honest, at least a little bit more, not completely honest, (laughs) but just a little bit more, just a little bit more honest than I normally am with myself. And I did, I did put that in shelved. I'm not going to front. Um, and I don't know, if, when the, it's moving out the, of shelves. that first but level, I didn't put it in abandoned. I didn't put it in abandoned. You'll get through it pretty so. quick. It'll only take like uh, probably a couple hours for you to get through it. No, because I'm already part way. Th- like I, I'm not too far from that yeah, level. Jenny, too. you uh, have like 30 minutes left to play. That's like all I'm asking you to play. <laughs> and I went back and I played 10 hours of chicory. Okay. No, like I, like I'm not well, like gonna you te- like sit here and tell you I'm not a piece of shit. Like I am. I'm like I. You're telling me it's like 30 minutes, and I'm like. I don't know. Like, I, that's just, you know, it breaks that, my heart. that is that is how I feel. I don't, can, I don't know if it Janet can say shit. It hurts me to hurt you because it hurt if, me enough that I'm going to do it 30 minutes. I don't know. I don't know if Janet can, like, talk shit about me playing Days Gone anymore. Because, like, if you won't play an <laughs> I hour, well, I did an hour of Psychonauts 2. I still have time to. If I do this, will you play Days Gone? The answer no. is no. So I don't know why you're false flagging Days Gone over here, <laughs> as you always do. You love to false flag that you're going to play this. That's I don't know what false flagging means. Forbidden. That's why I was surprised you did Forbidden, uh, for, for, her, Horizon Forbidden freaking West. Frozen Wilds. <laughs> I hate it. I, why do they name it this way? And then also, no spoilers for the game, but I got to the point, or at least one of the points, where, like, the name makes more sense. And I just sat there, like, still kind of mad as hell about it, because I'm like, ah, so this is where the naming went wrong. <laughs> anyway, but... I get this it, this but... brings us to an interesting question. Michael, aka Backbone underscore twenty two, wrote in to Patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can to be part of the show, and says, "What's the oldest game on your gaming backlog that you still think you'll get around to playing one day?" Example: I'm convinced one day I'll play through Ocarina of Time. It's been twenty three years, but I'll play it eventually. <laughs> Bro, um, take Ocarina of Time off that list. Play it off the take it off the list, bro. <laughs> you're not you're not playing it. Majora's After this Mask long? is the first one that comes to mind because mm-hmm. I have that on the D- the 3DS and I played a good chunk of it, but then I just stopped 
because I got to the water temple and everyone's like, it's going to be really hard. And honestly, just that discouraged me. That was enough that I was like, I'll take a break here. And I never came back. I also sort of struggled um, learning how to like best utilize and navigate the time mechanic in that game. Like, I think it's sure. very cool, but I found myself constantly being like, okay, damn, I have to go do this extra stuff to make sure that like, I either, you know, maybe don't lose what I, I, I it's been a long time since I played it. So I don't remember exactly how it works, but I found myself working against the mechanic as much as I did appreciate and understand why it was there. It kind of made it harder for me to spend time with the game. Um, but I, I'd like to go back to it. And then there's the debate of like, is the best version the 3DS one or the one on the N64? Well, the 3DS one is easier to control, but the N64 has this, that, and the other with the underwater. So I just don't know what I'm doing with that. But Sean, I like to think that I'm doing it again. Just uh, go back to the, the 3DS one. It's just, just, that's the version. That's the and then I keep charging the 3DS and the like. I hate these old handhelds I have with backlogs because every now and then I'm like, let's go play this. And I enjoy having that relationship in gaming of something I can just casually pick up and see like, okay, what was, oh god, what's that DS game like? Room 340, Hotel Dusk or whatever. Like, let's just uh, get crazy. Let's play like Loco Roco for a couple hours. But then there's that like constant rotation of like charging the device just to not play it it dies again then you go to charge it and like i hate that aspect of my life um i don't know what to do about it maybe i should just step up but i don't know it's just an give unpleasant up. time give up on those games you know what i mean oh, that's the thing I mean, blessing do you have an why answer give up when i can just string myself along you know what i mean <laughs> i mean my my answer would be mass effect like the mass effect franchise which i'm doing right i'm actively playing those games and, and that works out for me because they're making remasters and remakes i whenever like it's it, I wouldn't I don't have like old games in my backlog until there is an announcement of like a remaster or a remake for mm -hmm. at least a game that is that old. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, you know, what's the point of me going back at this? Yeah, because right? it, like, it could, you know, crash and burn and corrupt your save file 75 hours. in. you know, like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like what if I got my Vita out of a garbage can? Yeah, you know, we like, buy it on the black market. <laughs> You never know what's gonna go wrong. Make sure it doesn't say PETA. It's like a play, PlayStation PETA. God. You know, what I mean? some, something just knock off. I got it through your program, Greggy. So if you're telling me that your program was the garbage can outside of a fucking restaurant, then that's on you, okay? That's, that's what makes it the perfect crime. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say there's one game that like. I think I say this periodically on one on some of our shows, and every time I say it, I feel like I sound like a madman because it's like, why am I saying this? But I never did play the Order eighteen eighty six. You and always like, mention that, and it's short. That's a short. It's short. I think that's the thing that makes me really want to play it is knowing that it's yeah. It's, you can easily you know, yeah go through it. I can, I can easily play through it, unlike Days Gone. Um, and so like, and and that's a game that leading into it, I was just super excited for it because you know we all watched the trailers, we saw the werewolves and shit, and we all went, man, this game looks stunning and cool. And it came out and it got the bad reviews, and I was like, okay, well I'm not playing that. Now that we're far removed from it, I don't know, man. I look back at those trailers and I'm like, certainly this game couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> like certainly, it wasn't I could bad. It just wasn't great. That was the thing. It was just something you went through and did, and then uh, on to the next thing. Yeah, the aesthetic speaks to me. Gone. I think that's the thing. Like, but it's shorter. <laughs> No, no, but it's shorter. No, no, no. But it's short. I'm not playing a decent mediocre game for 40 hours. I will play it for four hours. There you so, go. Seeing you right there. Yeah. Balance it out. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, Michael's question of like that you still haven't. You, I don't. I don't know. Backlogs are such a weird thing. Where it's just, I, I feel like a few years ago, I just be, I had to have an honest conversation with myself, right? Of just like, I move heaven and earth all the time to play fucking video games that I want to play. And so if I have things on my thing that have been there forever and I haven't done it to play it, like, am I, do I care? Am I ever really going to get back? Like, and I mentioned it, and I know I want to talk more, I know we're running along now. I want to talk on Gamescast about it, of coming back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla over break. Like, that wasn't something that was like, on my backlog like oh, i need to get to i had kind of moved on and didn't think much of it and then the cassandra dlc brought me back and now i'm totally in it for a very specific reason of having fun but whatever but like i don't th that'll happen where older games that i i'll be in the mood for that'll be the thing is i'm finally in the mood for that game like when i came back to judgment last year or whatever i was like oh yeah this is finally hitting the right notes it needs to hit for me that's more of it whereas like I don't want to sit there and beat myself up. I don't want to sit there and keep games on my hard drive that I'm like, I have to play this, but I'm, I don't want to now. It's like, well, do I ever really want to play it? Like, and there's mood conversations to it and stuff like that, but I don't worry about it as much. You can't worry about it, Janet. Don't worry. Sure. Janet, don't worry. I'm doing great. Never been Good. calmer. <laughs> Super relaxed. <laughs> can't you tell? Oh, uh, and the one thing I want to give a shout out to you before we close up the show and get to the post show, right? Is I played the I played Dreams over break uh, for Ghostbusters oh. Afterlife. They did oh. a they had hired some creators to make a Ghostbusters Dreams level that I went and played, and it was both 
fun and then totally that thing of like all right well this is kind of what dreams is of just like they announced it and i was like oh my god what is it gonna be and i got in there and i was like oh it's you know i'm using the neutrona wand and i'm blasting ghosts and i'm trying to catch muncher and there's you know terror dogs and then i like oh it's just this one thing it's just a shooting gallery and it's like oh okay and it was that thing i played a bunch and i was like i want to set the high score i think that'll be a fun screenshot to put out of like i was you know greg's number one at this game and i kept and i was just, I, I had it down of what to do and i wasn't doing it i was like why am i not able to hit the scores other people are hitting and then i and i was like oh you know what it's vr compatible and i bet it's way easier to play in vr in terms of just pointing to where you need mm. to be to get the things and i was like i am not setting up my playstation vr right around my newborn baby right now so that will be the end of this project and i ended the project <laughs> Yeah, but it was that remember, sad thing of like, oh man, I really wanted this to be awesome and me be like, man, dreams. And I was like, oh no, this is dreams. And this is what dreams is. Yeah, it's such a bummer because I remember seeing that announced and at first being like, oh, it's pretty cool. And then like it's setting in of, oh no, this is like a, a like a marketing collaboration between like Sony and Sony. And then like, you know, doing that 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 cross collaboration in a cool way, but in a way that could be so much cooler if dreams was just like free in a platform as opposed yeah. to being a thing that people had to pay money to get into. Because I I can imagine that being like, what if that game, the Ghostbusters uh, Dreams game, was free on the PlayStation Store for anybody to just download and play? Sure. I feel like that would be such a cooler way to do it, and in a way that gives more shine to Dreams than it being locked behind this paid game. That like, are you really gonna pick up Dreams so that you can play this Ghostbusters thing? And if you already have Dreams, are you also into Ghostbusters? Like, how many people are Greg Miller <laughs> that are gonna play this thing? You yeah, know? I hear, I hear. Jan, did you see Ghostbusters Afterlife? No. God damn it. Wait, wait. I saw Spider-Man No Way Home again yesterday. <laughs> I did well, listen you, to the Ghostbusters song Ghostbusters. yesterday. I was That's in the mood good enough. For it. I'll take it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an episode of PS I Love You XOXO. Remember, you have two weeks, ladies and gentlemen, until we do the book club on that there Horizon Zero Dawn. So go replay it. Refresh yourself. Watch some of the spoiler casts we did if you, you replayed it, but you don't want to play it again. Just get in the mood to come here and talk about that as we get ready for uh, Forbidden West. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know PS I Love You XOXO is your PlayStation Hangout podcast. You can watch us record it live on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames each and every Monday afternoon. Of course, you can write in there too. You can get the show ad free there. You can have a great time with us. But if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. YouTube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe each and every Tuesday morning. Right now, the show's not over for us. We have a post show to record exclusively for patreon.com slash kind of funny games but until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you